Hello, everybody. A beautiful day at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Sega. It didn't look like that earlier this morning. We had low cloud and fog delayed the start of uh, proceedings and the warm up by over an hour and a half. But the Inamitsu Mazda MX-5 race did get off, as did the Lamborghini Super Trofeo. And we even got a 10 minute warm up for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. So. Everything is set, the scene is ready. We're clearing the pit lane of a huge crowd of spectators that have joined us here just off the Monterey Peninsula for the fourth round of this year's championship. The cars rolling off the grid on the fourth very different style of circuits that we've had this year. 2.238 miles, 3.602 kilometers. Andretti Hairpin, turn two, an option for overtaking. Uphill at turn six, that's a tough one. Got to nail your turn in there to get up the rear hull straight to turn eight and 8A, which the whole world knows as the corkscrew. Then plunging down through rainy curve. Turn 10 with the banking on the inside and an overtaking opportunity and action area at turn 11. Hello, everybody. I'm John Hindoff in the IMSA Global Broadcast Centre. IMSA have done a stellar job this morning, keeping us on time for this race, shuffling their cards very well indeed to make sure that we are underway, spot on time. A little bit of cloud, but we have got some blue skies. Track temperature, 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius. In the air, 59 Fahrenheit and 15 Celsius. We had 94% humidity this morning. You literally could have cut the atmosphere with a cricket stump. Barely see down the front straight. Barely see from one side of the pit lane to the other, to be honest. Shay Adam from the pit lane. We are rolling on the formation stroke warm up lap. Have we got a clear pit lane? Have all 38 cars rolled? 38 cars are on the 2.238 miles that make up WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca because zero of them are left in the pit lane. So that is the good news. And remember, this is a split start. So we are going to be able to focus on the prototypes and then readdress our attention on the GTs. But John, notice something. Todd Snyder, a race director in IMSA competition for some of the support series, he's driving that Porsche leading the GT cars around the field. That's not fair. Yeah, double safety car start. Jeremy Shaw, that's really sensible because the top cars in GTD, both in GT D Pro and in GTD, uh, have been putting in times not that far away from the LMP2s and keeping this, the field split. It's almost in half, actually. Uh, 17 prototypes and the rest of the field uh, being the GTDs. I think that's a really sensible call from IMSA to make sure we don't get a huge smuzzle down at turn two two or possibly later in the lap yeah i mean yeah th th there's a fair time differential between the lmp2s and the gtd cars it was less so with the gtlms but there's you know there's uh, two and a half uh, seconds or, or so differential and uh, but but i like it because it, it means we can focus we can see probably what happens at both starts and uh, they can let them get on with their own race so i really like this i, I, I think it's a good move uh, and uh, i'm glad they brought that uh, that back again i, I I had no problem with the policy initially, and I think this is a smart move for, for all sorts of reasons, and particularly for, for other, more particularly perhaps for other races on the schedule. Yeah. But I'm glad it started off here too. At IMSA Radio, if you'd like to get in touch with us here in the IMSA Global Broadcast Centre as we bring vision and sound together with a huge crowd on hand, been really busy this week, very patient as well this morning after that weather delay. It will be the two Porsche Penske Motorsport machines that lead the full field to the green flag in a moment or two's time. Matt Campbell and Mathieu Jaminé, their starting drivers. Then the Acura and Cadillac, respectively, of My Shank Racing and the Wheel and Engineer, Wearing Engineering Cadillac, number 31 of people Durrani. Been a good qualifying session for Porsche. They took the two poles in GTD and GTD pole as well. GTD Pole and GTD Pro Pole, should I say. Faf Motorsports and Kelly Moss with Riley. Klaus Backler, first time at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Klaus has been around for a long time, but his only other IMSA starts were all 
before this season, at least, at the Rolex 24 Daytona. It'll be Alec Udell who'll start the Kelly bus with Riley, number 92, on the outside of the front row. And an LMP2 starting just behind the GTPs. What a battle for pole position between George Kurtz and Ben Keating. Keating had it wrapped up at one stage. He was eight tenths of a second ahead of the field. But on the very last lap, the very last chance, the CrowdStrike Racing by APR driver managed to sneak it away and will lead his group to the line. Stand by, everybody. Take a deep breath. Two hours and 40 minutes on the clock. We have the two Porsche Penske Motorsports 963s leading a brilliant grid of 17 prototypes to the green flag of the racing at WeatherTech Raceway. Laguna Senga for the Motul Corsa de Monterey, powered by Hyundai. Big lock up from the outside of the front row from Chamonix. He's going off, he's gone off, he's almost gone off with his teammate. They've both dropped down, and through goes Colin Brown in an opportunist manoeuvre. And already the two Porsche Penske Motorsports have loused up the start. That's a massive Horlicks for them. And they drop down into the midfield of the GTPs. Klaus Backler and Alex Udell, can they do things better for Porsche? It looked like Klaus got a decent start. The Lexus, the Pro Lexus, the Arm Lexus rather, going wide uh, at the start of that particular run. It was, uh, John, it was Jack Hawksworth in the 14, actually, who went wide at the first couple of corners. But my goodness me, Jeremy, we're to undo all of that good work that you put in during practice and qualifying, the best of the Porsches is the six car now, Matthew Jaminet, and he's in third. I've got a feeling that Matt Campbell is at least a couple of three places behind him. Oh, my goodness. Mr Penske will not be pleased. Uh, he won't. Uh, no, you're right. Uh, and uh, nor should he be, because that was a... That was a. I mean, look, it's, it's still pretty cool here. Now, it's a lot less warm than yesterday. Uh, the, we know these tyres take a bit of a while to, while to get heated up, and the last thing you need to do is damage your tyres in the first corner, which is exactly what both of those two guys have probably done. Oh, there's a problem for the gradient car, oh no. Yes, it is, the GG Wentworth 66, turn six. Sheena Monk started that car. There's been an impact with something to the left rear uh, of that car. Now, she's got the car pointing in the right direction. The question will be, did she dump, jump or was she pushed there was a blue AMG on the outside uh, was that the windward car might have been inception McLaren has come into the pit lane I don't think that was that car that was in there the pits are closed uh, and the inception number 70 now need to look at the uh, Left rear of that shit, Adam. Is there damage to the left rear of that car? Because nope. that was the part that was on the track, Shay. Right front tire that is off its rim, John. That's the problem for this car. So this was emergency service for the number 70 in replacing just the single tire for Brendan Arib. But he will need to come back in when the pits are open for the GTD class to fulfill the emergency service requirement. All right, now we got Gradient Racing in. Sheena Monk is here. You said it's the left rear of her car? They're checking, oh yes, ah, broken suspension on the left rear. The wheel is wiggling at will, so that is not good. I think that might be day done for the Acura, a manufacturer that has a great record at this track. Ah, not the start anybody wants. An amazing, an amazing era early on from the two Porsches. It had already been a brilliant start by Colin Brown, actually. He was down the inside uh, of one of the Porsches at least and maybe Jeremy that was why the mistake was made it wasn't the teammate that forced the error it was Colin Brown down the inside then there was some jiggery and porkery three wide going into turn three always makes you hold your breath uh, just uh, a little bit but other than that relatively clean at the front of the field this by the way will be a short yellow so the pits will not uh, open and unless you coming in for emergency uh, service. What a start by Colin Brown, though, Jeremy. Whatever else was going on, and there was quite a lot going on, Colin Brown, I think, may have precipitated that error from the front row Porsches. I completely agree with you. It was a, he, he, he lit the, uh, the, 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 uh, 
the touch paper, didn't he? There is he across the start finish line to take the start of this race. A brilliant start by Conor Brown. He was already alongside the pole sitter, heading uh, over the crest and down towards the Mario Andretti hairpin. And then there was a massive lockup, wasn't it, from uh, from the pole sitter, Matthew Jaminet. And uh, I think the number, number six car, was it which way? I'm not sure which way around it was actually now, but one, one of them just got bottled. It was number seven car get got bottled out there as well. But that was a really messy start there for, for both of the Porsches, but a brilliant getaway for Corin Brown. He was absolutely on it. That was very, very impressive. And that pass down the inside was clean uh, and made. And I don't think he locked up those brakes. No. It was just a really good effort by Colin Brown. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us here through the broadcast, wherever you are in the world, if you're in Europe at the moment, uh, where it is, what, just after quarter past nine on a Sunday night. Hope you've had a lovely weekend. At IMSA Radio, if you're listening to us on RS2, remember you can have pictures if you're outside the US, where it's on national television here uh, this Sunday, NBC Network, imsaradio.com, hit the menu button on the top left and live video uh, for full coverage without breaks to the end of the race, which is still two hours, 34 minutes and 29, 28, 27 seconds away. Sirius XM 207 here in the US. Every race of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship covered without any interruption on Sirius XM. Check their website for the details of the channels over the weekend. Now, Ben Keating had a good start as well. Yeah. Jeremy Shaw got past George Kurtz in all of that kerfuffle. And the wins car ahead of the pole sitter now with George in second and TDS, the number 11 car. That's the more yellow than red one. We'll talk about the more red than yellow one. That's the 35 uh, later on, Francois Herrera. But Ben Keating using his experience to cut through the carnage in the early part of that uh, first lap. Yeah, did a nice job there. So George Kurtz settled into second place there. Lots of changes in GTD amongst that field there. There was a, it was, a, it was a, the pro Lexus that got edged out onto the dirt at the exit of the Mario Andretti hairpin. So uh, the starting driver in that number 14 car, uh, Jack Hawksworth, lost lost a fair bit of ground. And on board here with number 25 car heading down into uh, turn two, and you can see absolutely nothing there. I think it was. Yeah, gosh, that was wild. That was absolutely wild. I mean, a massive amount of tyre smoke from that car. It lasts a long, long time, too, as he slid on wide. That was number seven car, wasn't it? That was the pole that slid Correct. on wide there. Matt Campbell. Yeah, and uh, number six car was able to get through, so Jaminet uh, only cost him one position. But, uh, boy, that was, that was fraught down there. Question for me: It'd be how much damage has Matt Campbell done to a set of Michelin tyres? Absolutely. Three sets only for qualifying and the race. Three brand new sets uh, to be used, and quite a lot of the teams used two sets, or at least one, and scrubbed a set in during qualifying. Now the good news is it's nowhere near as hot as it was yesterday when we saw triple-digit track temperatures. It's 91 Fahrenheit on the track now, which is 33. That temperature is going to rise over the next two and a half hours. Uh, we saw 46 Celsius on the track, which is, what, 115, 116. Short yellow, no pass around. The pits have been opened for all cars as we'll go back to green this time around. And a great jump by Colin Brown and Pipo Tarani followed him. Little bit tardy from Mathieu Jabadier in the best of the Porsches, the number six. That's the one with the white pinstripes on the red car. Lock up from Pipo Tarani down at turn one. That is really catching people out. But he's gathered that one out, uh, gathered that one up and gets back into the wheel tracks of the leader, Brendan Areeb, with the drive through penalty. And he comes into the pits immediately in that number 70 inception McLaren. That gives us the news we were wondering about that hit on uh, Sheena Monk. Presuming uh, as that 66 NSX has gone behind the wall. I'm just trying to see what that uh, penalty was for on the race control channel, whether it was for that impact. 
That, that was for service, the uh, emergency service. He has to come into the pits uh, afterwards, uh, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a drive-through at all. It's the emergency service. Yeah. Correct. My apologies. I saw him coming through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was the right front. The, the thinking behind that, if you're not used to these regulations, it's far better to have a car come into a closed pit to have a problem fixed rather, Jeremy, than it cause another problem out on the circuit that necessitates the safety car either staying out longer or indeed coming out again. Uh, absolutely right. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good regulation and I think it works really, really well. So, the pace being picked up immediately by Colin Brown as he stretches to over a one-second lead. And that number 60, Acura, heading up to turn five now. Back in the pack. It's been a difficult weekend again, Jeremy Shaw, for Cadillac Racing, particularly for the 0-1. Sebastian Bourdais starting this race. A couple of races that he will want to forget certain parts of as we've got a spinner down at turn four. Dwight Merriman. And he is in the Aero Motorsport blue car with the yellow. Again, gets it pointing in the right direction and heads off, actually coming out of turn three there. And through into turn four. Uh, yes, as I was seeing, Jeremy, before that action, uh, a couple of uncharacteristic mistakes on the brakes for Sebastian Bordet. One here in qualifying, of course, at the start of the race on the streets of Long Beach, but he was very candid when he spoke to Shea in the pit lane earlier on this week to explain what was going on there. Yeah, who was that, sorry? Uh, Sebastian Bourdais. Sebastian Bourdais, absolutely right, yeah. No, I mean, dude, these cars are tricky to drive, aren't they, with the hybrid system the hy and the brake-by-wire uh, hybrid system as well on, on the braking uh, effort of these cars. It, they're really tricky to drive. They caught him out at Long Beach, caught him out yesterday in the first practice session as well. So, yeah, he was uh, somewhat sheepish, but, uh, but it was really cool cool of him to, to give us a proper explanation of the difficulties he faces as a driver, getting used to an entirely new system of braking for him. Uh, uh, the way these cars slow down is very, very different to anything he's done in the past. And uh, he was very candid about that. And really yeah, good of him to beat her. He could have made excuses. He didn't. Shea Adam has the inception, McLaren and Brendan array back in to the pit lane. And is this another penalty, Shea? It is stop plus uh, second penalty for the inception racing McLaren because when they came in to do the emergency service, of which they only needed to do the right front tire, they also did fuel. Ah, that's a no-no. You're allowed five seconds if you are running out of fuel, but putting five seconds of fuel in at the end of the first lap um, is probably pushing your luck uh, just a little bit and spotted by our IMSA pit lane officials. Thanks for all of their hard work and indeed those on the flag stands around the circuit as well. Let's check in with uh, GTD and the GTD pool sitter number nine of Klaus Backler, the plaid Porsche. Still leading the race as he goes through across the line. In second place, Heart of Racing, the 27. Roman De Angelis has pushed his way through to lead. He's fought his way through. Sorry, bad choice of words there, Roman. My apologies. Fought his way through into second in the Heart of Racing, Aston Martin. Roman did a cracking job last weekend at Spa in the 12 hours in the AMG for Heart of Racing. He was saved until the second half of the race because they expected the rain to come, and when it did, he was an absolute rain master. Also can perform in the dry here as he's now up to second position. So that's a change, and Alec Yudel has dropped down to fourth of the GTD car, still second in his class. As through come Daniel Yucatea and Alex Riberas, yeah. respectively for the Mercedes of WeatherTech and the Heart of Racing teams, other Aston Martin, the Pro car. Worth mentioning, again, if you're not used to this form of racing, GTD Pro and GTD, the cars are identical. It's the driver lineups that puts them into those two different classes. And we've got a new Aston uh, to the entry list this weekend, the number 94, Jared Andretti driven Andretti Autosport. He's already had a rude awakening in the early part of this race, Jeremy. Uh, 
Yeah, it's been a, a steep learning curve for uh, for this team, and particularly for Jared Andretti. Uh, he's driven some uh, yeah, sedan-based cars in the past, but uh, struggling to get used to this one a little bit. Not got many laps at all in this car, so it's a steep learning curve for him. Super job here by Colin Brown, though, turning consistent laps at the front of the field the last couple of laps. Low minute, low one minute 17, so that's pretty good pace uh, in the early stages. Uh, and uh, we just talked about that uh, GTD field. There was a real shuffle around at the end. Andretti hairpin on the first lap. The number 79 car made up a bunch of positions uh, on the inside of the corner. On the outside, however, was Jack Hawksworth in the number 14 car, and he lost uh, four or five positions, which uh, could be costly for him. We heard J uh, Bed Barnicott, by the way, say before the race that he and, and um, Jack had had uh, eight consecutive podiums. It's that the, the car has had seven consecutive podiums, but th those two drivers uh, have had actually nine consecutive podiums because the, you remember last year, Jack Hawksworth had to miss several races because of a motorcycle accident he had uh, at home in, in Yorkshire. Uh, but if you go back before, before that, the two, the, that pairing, Jack Hawksworth and Ben Barnick had had uh, two more podium finishes to add to the seven consecutive they had since Jack made his comeback. So uh, they're on a really rich vein of form, that number 14 car, looking to extend it here this weekend. They have the championship lead as well. Hello to Sven, regular Sunday evening with us here on IMSA TV and IMSA Radio. I'm guessing that you're over here in Europe, Sven. He says, uh, good to hear your familiar voices. Is this the last race for the IMSA teams before they head across to Le Mans? Actually, some of the IMSA drivers will be at the Nürburgring 24 hours next weekend. We've got the World Feed TV and radio for that from uh, Wednesday onwards and the full race over the weekend. And yes, after that, of course, we're getting ready for Le Mans. Exclusive test day coverage and the only way that you can get live free coverage from the 100th anniversary Le Mans 24 hours with nearly 50% of the driving talent there coming from the IMSA series. That's over on our sister service, RS1 Haggerty Radio Le Mans, uh, from the Sunday test all the way through to after the race. Thanks, Sven, for that at IMSA Radio if you want to get in touch. And we're in traffic. Colin Brown working his way through the back of the GT field. That's why he wanted to build up that three and a half, four second lead so that he's got a little bit of leeway as he works through the traffic. Shit, Adam, down in the pit lane. It's actually something like 46% of the field for the Le Mans as it is now has run an IMSA race this year. And it's 30 drivers out of this field. So we have 38 cars, which means 76 drivers total, 30 of them will be running in the 24 hours of Le Mans in June. So a good showing as well from the number of drivers here at WeatherTech Raceway. We're going to take it today. Just underlining, Shea. Thank you for that stat. Underlining how important that motor race is. Oh, a huge incident down at turn 11. And that's someone who's hit the end of the pit wall there. And that is a horrible looking incident. The yellow flags I think we'll come out in a moment. Pits are closed and the pit lane entry has to be closed. Is that the Andretti machine? Oh, and a car has come into the pit. It is the Andretti Aston Martin. And we've got a prototype coming in as well. That's Stephen Thomas in the number 11 TTS racing car. But Jarrett Andretti with a very heavy impact to the end of pit lane. And I wonder if that happens as... There was some lappery going on, or whether Stephen just dived in trying to beat the yellows. Now, this is going to be a difficult recovery in the tight confines of that left-hander into the pit lane. You said, Jeremy, they've had a steep learning curve. They've not had much luck. The good news is Jarrett Andretti is getting himself out of that number 94 Andretti Autosport Aston Martin Vantage. Yeah, indeed. And the, the, the number 11 car coming into pits, I believe, was completely unrelated. I don't think they were even close to each other on the racetrack. Um, but, uh, yeah, we didn't see what happened to Jarrett, but that was a, a massive shunt that he's had there. Good to see uh, him out of the car, but uh, now the uh, looking, and, and OK. 
The, the way he's looking at the left rear, Jeremy, suggests to me perhaps something broke on that car. To Stephen Thomas, by the way, must have been told by his team, and rightly so, pits are close. He's driven straight through without doing anything, so that will not be a penalty for that car uh, as he's gone straight out. The marshals, now that they know that the pit lane isn't going to be full of cars, have gone to work cleaning up. Now, uh, let's see if we can unpick uh, what happened. He was being passed by traffic. The two BMW GTP cars were going through. Jarrett comes through turn 10, pushes to the outside of the track. Then the Porsche. Oh, it's a tip, tip from the Porsche, the number six car. As it was going through on driver's right. Uh, in fact, it was the number seven car. My apologies, the Paul sitting car, Matt Campbell pulled to the left-hand side, trying to make a move on Ricky Taylor, but unfortunately, the Aston was still there. Racing incident, uh, Jeremy, or are you going to slap somebody's wrist for that one? Uh, I'd like to have another look at that one again. Here we go now, let's have a look here. Jared Andretti's... Uh, yeah, the numbers, the, the Porsche certainly could have given him more room there. There's no question about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. T tricky, tricky one. Uh, the Porsche at that point should be moving over right across to the right-hand side of the road to take the line into the corner, unless he's trying to pass the car ahead yeah, of him. I think it's what he's uh, doing. Yeah. And if that's the case, then he should have realised the, the, the Aston Martin. He's going to try to get a, a, as far across to the right-hand side of the track there as he can in any case. So he did absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, did Jared Andretti, in my opinion, uh, and the number seven car made it a, a lot more difficult than it should have been. So that was a really unfortunate incident for Jared Andretti and uh, not the way he wants to start uh, his uh, career in a, uh, in a GT, GT3 car after just uh, a dozen laps. The key thing for me, and I'm sure race control will be looking at this, is whether uh, Matt Campbell in that number seven Porsche changed lines. If he went straight down out of the exit of the corner, uh, he, he, he'll probably be okay. If he was moving to the left, that might be something different. I do think he was shaping to make a dive down the inside of Ricky Taylor, but as you say, Jeremy, if there's somebody already there, uh, we'll leave that to race control to report to the stewards, and if they deem uh, it necessary, and then the stewards to decide uh, what action, if any, is required. So we're under another full course yellow. Been a bit of an untidy start here. Uncertain about whether we would uh, get this race uh, underway uh, on time. We certainly did, but we're already uh, under our third uh, uh, safety car with two 18 still second. to go. Uh, second, excuse me. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, my uh, screen is actually giving me some wrong uh, information on that. I'll just refresh, it, refresh that. Not a cloud in the sky at the moment. The pits uh, remain closed. The pass around has started. This allows yes. anyone, and, and this, this actually is really sensible by IMSA because the leading GTP cars, Jeremy, had just started going through the GTD field. Yeah, so there were various cars trapped in between the safety car in amongst the prototypes and the, uh, the, uh, the, the GTD class leaders. So those, those cars that w had not been lapped by the leader in GTD are able to go past the other prototypes, past the safety car and pull into position at the back of the pack. And that was mainly, I think, just the, uh, just the, um, the cars that had already been into the pits, i.e. the seven, number 70 McLaren, certainly. Um, and... Um, that's one of the cars that was most affected by that. At the end of the pit sequence, I think the pit lane will open at the end of this one. Yeah, um, once uh, they got that uh, yeah. safety truck out of the way, they can't open it yet. No, no, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, with the flatbed there. Um, I, I have to say, uh, although that was bad, that could have been much worse. And it's also a tribute to how well built and how safe the GT cars nowadays are. And easy to think of them as uh, something that's come off the showroom floor and had a bit of racing kit bolted onto them. Not the case now, even for GT3 cars. Uh, they have been uh, significantly uh, structurally changed from their road-going counterparts. Uh, with uh, substantial 
roll cages and crash structures around the driver. Note that Jared Andretti was able to, even after that big shunt, uh, be uh, able to open the door and climb out uh, without too much problem. Uh, Ilf, he will feel the uh, consequences of that tomorrow uh, when the, uh, the seat belts which will have dug into him a little bit. We'll, uh, there'll be a few bruises around there, but the good news is he got out on his own. Let's take this opportunity before the uh, pits open and also before we get action on the pit lane to uh, preempt the most popular question uh, to IMSA Radio on Twitter, at IMSA Radio, by the way, and that is drive times. Shea Adam, enlighten us so that I can save people some tapping on their keyboards. <laughs> Minimum time has already been met in the two pro classes. So for GTP and GTD Pro, if you wish to come in and change your driver out, you may do so at the, well, not at this moment, but at the next moment of asking. GTD, the minimum drive time is 45 minutes, so this caution coming at the most inopportune time, as far as that's concerned, not yet an option to come in and change out your drivers, and unless you've got a very speedy driver change, i.e. you're going to get it done in somewhere in the region of 15 seconds, you don't really want to come in and top off with fuel to then bring your driver back in at the 45 minute mark and pull them out while putting on more tires, but we might see some teams elongating the opening stint of their starting drivers, so that's something to keep an eye out for LMP2, this is where things get interesting. 60 minutes minimum drive time for the bronze driver in each of those cars, which means they're all going to be getting new tires at some point throughout this race. And no tire warmers in this series. It's onto the drivers to get the heat in the tires. It's going to be very fun. And the bronze drivers are going to have to earn their keep today. Shea Adam down in the pit lane. 25 minutes have elapsed uh, before the pit lane opens. Let's uh, have our first VP Racing in event update. I should mention, by the way, that incident between uh, Matt Campbell in the number seven por Porsche, uh, Porsche Penske Motorsports 963, and the Andretti Autosports Aston Martin is under review at the moment. Pit lane remains closed, so this is how they stand. Colin Brown with a brilliant start originally, and then off the restart, but that first start, oh my goodness, at the green flag, down the inside of two uh, Porsches, and took the lead at the Andretti hairpin. He was followed through by P. Portorani into second place, so the 60 Acura from the 31 uh, black, white, and red Cadillac, red at the front of the wheel and engineering machine. Then Matthew Jaminet started uh, in uh, second position, and uh, dropped down to, third, to fourth, but then came up to third. Uh, and the top six made up by Conor de Filippi and Philip Eng, with Ricky Taylor in sixth, seventh, Matt Campbell, eighth, Bordet, ninth, team and Van der Helm, and all of those cars are in the pit lane. And Shane Adam. And there's a backup further down because the 20 high-class racing LMP2 car could not make the turn, and Tower Motorsports is trapped behind them. The leader was Colin Brown coming in he is getting fuel and scrubbed in Michelin tires. It is fuel only for Sebastian Bourdais. Fuel only for Pippo Durrani. Fuel and tires for Conor De Filippi. Fuel only for the 24 BMW. And fuel and tires for both of the Porsches as well as the Konica Minolta Acura. Oh, but the pit close light is still on and everybody managed to see it. That's the good news. There should not be a drive through penalty for there. We did have the LMP2 pole sitter into the pits as well. George Kurtz has gotten fuel and tires. Let's see John Ferrano just waiting on fuel at this point and also into the pits for a new rear wing. That would be Dwight Merriman from Aero Motorsports in the number 18. Uh, the reason the pit exit light was on because they had to wait for the field to go around. Let's have an update on the uh, gradient number 66 NSX half shaft and upright damage on that Sheena Monk car. Uh, replaced diffuser, um, uh, sorry, being replaced, the diffuser intact. So they're going to do laps uh, as a test if it can still run. Now, thanks to Declan Brennan from the team for bringing that information uh, to our attention. So they, uh, we told you how they went in. We'll check how they go out in a moment. Uh, the GT field on the VP Racing in-race update. 
stands like this before they decide to come in or not to the pit lane. Klaus Backler leads for Faf Motorsport in the number nine Porsche. Then it's the 27 Roman de Angelis driven heart of racing Aston Martin. Daniel Junkadea in the 79 white, red and blue WeatherTech Racing AMG. Then Alex Riberas in the 23 heart of racing Aston Martin Vantage GT3. Then Alec Yudel, Kelly Moss with Riley Porsche in the 92. And then it is Jordan Taylor. And all of those cars are coming into the pit lane. That's how they were before the pit lane. We'll find out after they leave who's had the best pit stop. Shea Adam is watching them on the pit lane. Three. Well, it's a very slow stop to the number seven of Porsche, Matty Campbell. They changed all four tires and then changed them once again. So we'll need to find out what was going on there. Into the pit boxes for both of the harder racing Aston Martins. Fuel tires for both cars, no driver changes. Driver change going on for the WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. That is Jules Gunyan taking over for Danny and Kanea. Fuel and tires for them. Fuel and tires for both of the Lexuses. No driver changes for either of the Vassar Sullivan cars. We've got fuel and tires for the Fab Porsche. Great stop. It's Klaus Backler roars back into life ahead of everyone else. Fuel and tires for Madison Snow. He stays aboard the number one Paul Miller Racing BMW and jumps ahead of Roman DeAngelis on that stop. There's the pit exit light was on. It looked like a bit of carnage at the exit. The first car to get off the pit lane, though, that would be Corvette Racing. We're used to seeing them win the pit stop demos back in the American Le Mans Series days. Well, they just won it in reality here in the Emsa WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Yeah, they're behind the Faf Porsche. Uh, that they were considerably behind the Faf Porsche, but I've got a nasty. I've got a nasty feeling, Shea, that the Faf Porsche ran the red light at the end of pit lane. A big, big burnout from Klaus Backler. And does he stop before it goes green? He does not. He's through the RFID readers. And then everybody has to check up to wait for it to go green. That will be a drive through for that car. Big mistake. Big mistake by Klaus Blackneck, supremely experienced driver. But as we said, Jeremy, prior to this season, only ever done the Rolex 24. So this is the first time he's here and his excitement there. I bet he didn't even look to the right hand side to see that red light. No, that's uh, going to be a costly error. They're going to be it's going to be awfully hard to to come back from that. They're going to have to serve a drive-through penalty as a result of that. And uh, yeah, that could be costly. But uh, what a shame for him. But hey, what happened to number 60 car during that round of pit stops? Colin Brown. Did, yeah, uh, he, he's all of a sudden come out in seventh position. Did fuel and tyres, so they were stopped for a little bit longer. Uh, most of the other cars did fuel only, apart from, I think, one of the Porsches that Shea said. That was the 7 Matt Campbell car, but they did two sets of tyres for for some reason. Uh, the only other car that uh, we think done fuel and tyres was Philippe Albuquerque, who's behind Colin Brown. Yeah, so the two Acuras now, the t uh, that whole, tr uh, mm. you know, the tail of the field in GTP. We've got uh, LMP2 cars at the front of the field, uh, four of them that did not stop, number 52, number 51, number 35, and number 11. Well, the 11 did stop, but it went, went straight through it, so it didn't stop during that caution period. And um, so he's out of sequence with everybody else, but then uh, of the GTP cars, it's Durrani that came out and lead ahead of the two BMWs to the, to the sandwiching Sebastian Bourdais. So Bourdais, who'd been struggling to keep pace with the other GTP cars through that opening stint, he was running in seventh position and fallen back a bit from number seven car, was directly ahead of him. He's now come out in third position. So uh, a, a big uh, gain there for the two Cadillacs. No final wave by, but class splits, Sheer Adam. Again, a little bit of a change this weekend here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Yes, and the interesting thing is how is this all going to play out? Because, of course, we had drivers that had fallen back down through the field in the LMP2 class that were well within the GT ranks, so it's going to add a bit of flavor now that we get to do that all again. And keep in mind, we had LMP2 cars stay out on the track, not coming into the pits. It was uh, Ben Keating who stayed out most notably. So a slight difference in the class splits where we'll... Uh, begin the GTP class split and there's also a GT split from the rest of the prototypes so any P2s that are down the field will go ahead of the GTD cars and then the GTPs 
get waved, as far as I'm aware, Jeremy, all the way to the front of the field, ahead of the LMP2s. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I, I was wondering what was going to happen there. Are they going to move the, uh, the LMP2 cars leading overall? So would they move the, all the LMP2s ahead of the GTPs? No, common sense prevails there. So it will be the GTP cars that lead the way to the restart. Uh, so it might uh, it, it'll probably be next time around we should be able to get back to green and then we'll have all the prototypes uh, GTP cars ahead of the LMP2s as they were for the, from the start of the race and then all the GTDs behind them. They will be interspersed with each other, the GTDs and the GTD pros. Correct, no class split within the GTD categories at the moment. Uh, the top three GT uh, cars are in fact GTDs. Patrick Gallagher for Turner Motorsport has not stopped, neither has Alan Metney for Kelly Rock Moss with Riley in the number 91 Porsche, Alan Brynjolfsson in the bright yellow Volt Racing Porsche uh, 992 GT3R. Uh, that is in third position. Then the three GD Pro leaders, but Klaus Backler's going to have to drop out of there. We know that he's going to get a drive-through penalty uh, ahead of Jordan Taylor, so the Corvette will assume the lead when that happens. He's going to have about three laps, three times past the start-finish line before he has to answer that penalty and come into the pit lane. Klaus Backler, uh, Shield Gunon, third place for WeatherTech Racing's Mercedes. I think the lead car's lights are out. Yeah, the Porsche uh, resplendent in a very jazzy colour scheme has indeed got its lights out as the cars go through turn six, climbing up the rear hull straight. That car will accelerate away and it will be uh, Pipo Durrani who leads back to the green, courtesy of a splash of fuel and no Michelin tyres. Tactics played a huge part in how the race played out, tyre tactics playing a huge part and how the race played out last time out on the streets of Long Beach, part of our Porsche keys to the race and the tyres. Well, at the moment, Durrani, Conor de Filippi, in second, Sebastian Bourdain in third, Philip Eng in fourth, and Simon van der Helm in fifth position are all on the tyres on which they started this race. Colin Brown, yeah. the first with you, Michelin rubber. Stand yeah, by, so everybody. Best... Go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, the best of the Porsches, then, is Simon van der Helm in the JDC Miller Motorsports car. Take a picture of that, John Church, right now. <laughs> Put it on the office wall on Monday. Across the line to the green flag, typically the Brazilian has got a good start. That's Pipo Durrani. Goes through turn number two. Porsche, the bright yellow Porsche going a little bit wide there. That's putting him uh, under pressure from Machu Jamini in the Porsche Penske Motorsport machine. But it's the wheel and engineering Cadillac with the red front fading into that dark grey rear. That is the Cadillac colourway. The Gold-fronted car is Sebastian Bourdais. He's in third, and Conor Di Filippi is with them side by side. Porsche in accurate action. It's the number six of Mathieu Jaminet yeah. and Philippe Albuquerque coming yeah. through and taking that position from Jaminet. Exactly right, John. It is the, the Acura moving ahead of the uh, of the of the pole-winning Porsche. It does seem. No, sorry, as second place Porsche, wasn't it? The it was, the, yeah. Uh, the, but the best the position Porsche after that Indeed. kerfuffle on the first lap. It does seem as though the Acuras get their tyres up to temperature and pressure quicker. Now I know there was controversy about that at uh, Daytona with the Sham card. A mistake by Timon van der Helmer down at turn number 11, and that has just handed. That's an absolute free kick uh, for. To, for uh, Mathieu Jaminet and Philippe Albuquerque, who've gone through Matt Campbell into the pit lane, the number seven. Uh, incident responsibility with the Andretti Autosport Aston Martin, lots of A's there, and also a stop and 60 second hold for the FAF Porsche for blowing the light at the end of pit lane. That is pretty much going to cost them a lap, Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, I know it'll cost them uh, yeah, more than a lap. Uh, you're absolutely right. So uh, that's going to be really, really tricky for them. What a shame for Klaus Backer. Did a, just a fabulous job. Here's a replay of that incident with uh, the number seven Porsche uh, 
963, the prototype car just moving to the inside and sw side swiping uh, the uh, Jared Andretti, who's completely minding his own business there, doing absolutely nothing wrong. That was no question. It, that view there makes it even more apparent that it was number seven car that moved across the, the bowels of the uh, Aston Martin. So, yeah, right to call that penalty, and you've got to feel really bad for Jared Andretti and that Andretti all the sport team. It, it, it's a, almost a general rule that if there is a GT versus prototype incident, that the prototype will get called for it, unless it's particularly egregious for the GT. In all the drivers' meetings, the GTP, the prototype drivers, are told, look, you've got extra performance, you've got extra downforce, you have to make clean passes in the GT field. And the race control and stewards deeming that not to be the case. In our Porsche keys to race, we said minimise mistake, short lap, long pit lane, and that has been an absolute nightmare for the car that was on pole position in GTD. Klaus Backler will be fired up now. They're going to have to use some tactics to get themselves back towards the sharp end of the field. They are at last of the running GT cars. Klaus Backler uh, has an awful lot to do, and I'm just checking. I think he has. Yes, he has dropped off the lead lap in GT, Jeremy. Uh, has he? 20 laps completed to 21 of everybody else, and he's out. Yeah. Now, big Whoops. cloud of dust at turn, exit to turn two into turn three. Is there a car uh, off uh, in that dust cloud? Literally could not see. And the 66 has come out from behind the wall, the NSX of Gradient, it leaves the repairs and remedial work have been done. It will be an elongated test section. Two hours for Sheena Monk and Catherine Legg. Now, down towards the final corner. Corvette with uh, fant fantastic uh, run out of the final corner. It's the number three car, the bright yellow machine, and is just carving his way through traffic there. Great GTD battling as ever, Jeremy. The uh, street car, nominally street car based classes, are always such entertainment. And we've had brilliant variety every time it seems that we look uh, at the, uh, the lap rundown and the timing and scoring, all of the manufacturers have had their day in the sun at some stage yeah. in the season so far. Yeah, it's been fantastic. If you look at GTP ranks, we've had uh, Acura won the first race of the season, then the Cadillac the second, uh, Porsche the third, in uh, LMP, excuse me, in uh, GTD Pro, it was the uh, Mercedes won the first race of the season, Porsche the second, Lexus the third, and in GTD non-pro, it was Aston Martin winning the first race, and then the only uh, the only repeat winners are Brian Sellers and Madison Snow for Paul Miller Racing at the BMW in GTD non-pro. So uh, it's been uh, very much even Stevens, and now, uh, in just looking at GT Pro now, a great restart there for Jack Hawksworth. He made up several positions on that restart. He's up into second place now in GTD Pro. I think he was fourth at the restart. It's across the line for Jordan Taylor, leading in GTD Pro, but Alan Metney still holds the GTD lead. A couple of questions coming in, and I'll, I like this actually. What's the potential wisdom, right turn lover, in Central Europe? What's the potential wisdom of leaving an LMP2 car out during a yellow flag? Given the class split, the LMP2s with the re-brimmed tanks will be directly on the tails of the ones that have stayed out, and therefore they'll have to come in earlier for fuel. It's a fair point, Jeremy, which we'll get to in a moment because we've got more GTP action across the line. Both of the Porsches have already made contact with the number 10, Codica Minolta, Acura, and it was almost another little side-by-side -side action there. A mistake from Philippe Albuquerque at turn 10 was what put the number six car right on its tail as it came into turn 11, and they were side-by-side -side with a wee bit of overlap coming across the line. But 
Albuquerque using the superior straight line speed of the Acura. That's probably the one of the one of, if not the uh, fastest car over a single lap so far this season. Where the Porsche, notwithstanding its performance in qualifying this weekend, that is generally in race trim. The two Porsches from uh, Porsche Penske Motorsport have generally had the slowest, uh, fastest race lap. If that makes sense, Jeremy. Yeah, but not this weekend, for sure. Uh, the Porsches have been fast all the way through. They were fastest in both practice sessions, fastest in uh, qualifying yesterday, first and second on the grid, of course, in qualifying with a, uh, by GTP standards, uh, relatively big margin over the rest of the field. It was two tenths of a second <laughs> over Colin Brown, who qualified third. But uh, yeah, the Porsches are fast this weekend, no question about it. A bit of few uh, minor balance performance uh, tweaks since the last round at Long Beach. Weights were varied very, very slightly. The Acura uh, added four kilos, a bit of debris there on the racetrack. The uh, BMW lost five kilos, the Cadillac uh, lost one kilo, the Porsche gained a couple, and then a couple of uh, slight tweaks in the, in the power for the stint energy as well. Just small changes. Uh, but uh, certainly the Porsche has adapted well to this track uh, in the uh, practice and qualifying sessions. Bit of debris on the track. Now, I'm not sure whether that came from the gradient car or it's... Uh, and that was run over by the Lexus that was following it, or it fell off the Lexus, uh, to be honest. That was the, the 14, the pro car of Jack Hawksworth, with uh, looked like a wheel liner. No, it's off the front of that car. So there's been some contact right front on the red numbered, that's the pro Lexus, in second position at the moment, chasing uh, Jordan Taylor. He's got a GT D car in front of him, Alan Metney, as Jordan Taylor has dealt with that Kelly Moss Porsche and gone to the head of the GT field, still leading GTD, of course. So uh, just going back to the, uh, just going back to the, uh, thought on LMP2, Jeremy. Is that, is that the LMP2 teams that stayed out? Ben Keating, Eric Lux, uh, Francois Aero. Uh, is that them thinking about minimum drive time and, and stretching their first pit stop to somewhere near minimum drive time for their drivers? Yeah, probably. And, and or looking after the tyres as well. You don't, did, didn't want to change, you know, keep that track position. It's too early to make the uh, the driver change. You know, it, it, it's... They could probably get to the end of this race. They're going to need uh, at least two more stops, possibly three. And uh, you know, the, the, the theory behind coming in to make a pit stop at that stage is that when they do make the driver change, they will need a little bit less fuel than the cars that do not make a pit stop. So that's the, uh, the, the strategy, strategic call that the teams need to make. How much track position do they want to give up by making that pit stop? as to how much they, against how much they will gain by having a shorter stop when they change drivers. In and out for Alan Bryn Jolfsen uh, and the 77 right motorsport Porsche. Now, he's still short at the wheel. I'll be very surprised if he has, because he's met, met his uh, drive time. I think they yeah. haven't uh, changed over the driver identifier. Uh, Trent Hinman should be behind the wheel of that car. Now, now, their drive time is only 45 minutes, and they have met that because that was their first pit stop. Remember, time Correct. in the pit doesn't count as drive time. So that's Correct. perfect. Correct, John. And that, and that was one of the cars that did not pit during the other, the, you know, the earlier pit stop. Uh, and that's, that's the reason for it. They can come in now uh, a lap, but at least before all the other contenders in GTD and get their faster driver behind the wheel. Don Vitale at IMSA Radio. This is my first time watching uh, multi-class racing at Laguna. Is it always this frantic? Might have to doze up on my blood pressure. For, it's been quiet so far, Don. Uh, thanks for joining us. Not sure where you are in the world. Should have watched the uh, Mazda MX-5, the Edemitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup race yesterday and today. That's frantic. Unbelievable <laughs> racing, uh, particularly when they thought they could get away with anything in the fog this morning when race control probably couldn't see what was going on and neither could we. No, it's it's pretty much standard operational practice down the years here, Dan. Uh, welcome to the IMSA family, wherever you're watching uh, around the world. Good to have uh, your company at IMSA Radio if you'd like to get in touch with us. Traffic is yeah. going to be now until we get another 
safety car, Jeremy. It's going to be an issue for all of the prototype cars as they come through the GT field. Yeah, it is, and it's going to be busy from now on in. Uh, just go back to the MX-5 Cup race uh, briefly. How cool is it to see it was a contact there, there between the two BMWs coming down the hill? Looks like something fell off. Oh, no, no, it was, it the, wasn't. It it was, was the BMW and... Excuse me. That was and the number Acura. 60 car, Colin yeah. Brown. It's Philip Eng and Colin Brown, wasn't it? Making a little bit of contact there. Battle for fourth, that is, Jeremy. Uh, Eng, Brown and Philippe Albuquerque yeah. with uh, Mathieu Jaminet right there as well. So a four-car yeah. GTP train coming through uh, the various battles in GTD. That's Alex Ribeiro. They're going past in the heart of racing GTD Pro. Aston Martin, he's in fourth position in GTD Pro. Sixth of the GT cars. Uh, this is going to get pretty hectic for these GTP. <laughs> it's video game time at yeah. WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Sega. Yeah, last a couple of lap times for the leaders have been in the one minute 20s. He was doing 17s in clear air, so costing him you know, two or probably at least three seconds per lap, particularly as they get through into the meat of the GTD traffic. Just briefly back to the MX5 Cup race. How cool was it to see Aaron Johnson win that race this morning? I mean, there's a guy who comes from absolutely nothing. Uh, to to make a career in the sport, he, he knew nobody. Uh, he's just he's 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 got that far on his nous uh, and common sense, and just working supremely hard. Very very cool. It can be done in this sport, but uh, yeah, we've got some great races going on here. There's a good battle between two of the BMWs uh, in GTD. That's the battle at the moment for the third position in uh, non-pro with Patrick Gallagher just holding off Madison Snow, the championship leading car number one for Paul Miller Racing. Yeah, just finishing up the point on uh, Aaron uh, Johnson story. Um, he probably wouldn't be doing what he ha is doing now, Jeremy, if it was not for the real cash folding money that Mazda puts into grassroots racing. He's been the recipient of a, a couple of uh, of winning checks uh, and you've looked after him at Team USA uh, as well so a um, little golf clap for you and Team USA but also for that Mazda program oh. that uh, gives money to people to go racing and continue their yeah. careers. Yeah, I mean, you know, he 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 you know, been trying to break break into professional ranks when and won the the MX5 Cup. Uh, he won the the the, the uh, what's it called the, the the MX5 shootout, I guess. Yes, he did. Won that, uh, and uh, last year he won the the NASA national championships as well, uh, which got him another sum of money to move up into this level and that win today will be huge for him because if he is his budget where he's going yes. you know, he, he's not very right. much on a race by race basis yes. with JTR engineering well six thousand dollars uh, for that yeah, race with this morning help. as well as what comes at the end of the season let's get back to the lead battle here it's getting fairly frantic although people Durrani has used the traffic better in that red fronted wheel and engineering Cadillac he was under extreme pressure from Connor De Filippi there's another great young American driver who is now a works BMW pilot in that BMW M hybrid V8 for team RLL not quite able to get on full terms there was a bit of a lock up a moment or two ago Sebastian Bourdais keeping his nose clean here is in third position for another Cadillac the gold fronted car as the leaders come down to the final corner to complete another lap 30 in the books so far P. Portorani doing P. Portorani things in that wheel and car goes across the line clicks off another lap 1.19.2 that's a couple of seconds away from as quick as he has been, but that's down to traffic, and now he's in behind Brynjolfsson. No, check that, it's Trent Hinman now in that car. That has come in, the bright yellow vault at Porsche down the inside of Trent. That's smart driving from Trent. He's experienced, he knows he doesn't want to get caught up there and lose sight of the car he's racing in front of him, which is the Frederick Shandroff driven Inception Racing McLaren. Not his battle to hold up the GTP cars, and certainly, Jeremy Shaw, not the two leaders as they came through. <laughs> no, uh, good heads-up driving there. Uh, and well, He's uh, got a great... Sorry, Jeremy, he's got, Trent's got a great run on Shandorf coming out of five. That was great heads-up driving because yeah. he's actually used those cars coming through to his advantage, and I'm fairly certain the next time we see that battle, which for the moment is for 12th and 13th, but those cars have made pit stops, I think we'll find that that bright yellow Wright Motorsports Volt Racing Porsche is ahead of the Inception Racing McLaren. Smart move by Trent, that's a racing brain. Hard to teach that, Jeremy. That's almost instinct, isn't it? 
Yeah, it really is. Uh, and he is, he got a, a great race of brain in the He's a really smart young man and uh, he's, uh, again, yeah, another guy who's who's worked really hard to create opportunities for himself. He's been working with Alan Brynjolfsson now for several years. They won the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series together, uh, and Alan decided to move on up to the Ipswich Weather Tech Sports Car Championship and take Trent with him. Uh, and that's uh, you know, so a fabulous opportunity for him. And uh, Alan, uh, you know, is doing a really good job in these cars. This is he's only been racing for three or four years in anything at all. So uh, he's made uh, big progress during that time with Trent Hinman at his side. Battle for fourth position going down to turn number four. It's BMW versus Acura. How good is it to see the BMWs picking up its pace after a very difficult start to this 2023 season? All of these cars very new. The Porsche has had the most testing. It's been on the track the longest. And it's side by side going up the hill. Philippe Eng and Colin Brown. Brown elbows out, somehow gets through at turn number six and takes fourth position. That was an extraordinary manoeuvre by Colin Brown. He's already pulled off two of the moves of the season and following him through is the number 10 car of Philippe Albuquerque. Not sure Philippe's going to get away with that one. That was not leaving room on the exit of the corner and that's cost three positions in two corners. The first one, I think we're going to be OK about that second one. I'm not so sure that may be being looked at in race control, but that means that Colin Brown's up into fourth, Philippe Albuquerque up into fifth, and I think uh, Mathieu Javanier is there or thereabouts as well. Yes, he has. So Philip Eng from being fourth at the start of the lap is now seventh. Yeah, and all that uh, argy bargy cost them about four seconds to the car directly ahead of them on the racetrack, that's Sebastian Bourdais. Bourdais is uh, still within a couple of seconds of the second place car, running third then for Cadillac Racing in, in the uh, Ganassi Run uh, zero 01 car. But now there's a full ten and a half seconds back to Colin Brown. It was only oh. six seconds on the previous lap. Uh, that's, uh, that's how much that uh, jockeying for position costs them. Adam in the pit lane as we've got more pit stops. The number 81 Porsche is in to the number 91 Porsche, excuse me, is in the pit lane for Alan Bentley. He's first stop. She's down with Patrick Gallagher. Shay. We just had both of the Turner BMWs in for their stops, fuel and tires, and driver changes for both. So, Patrick Gallagher, we've been talking about MX5 Cup racing here. You've won about a million of those. How different is it to be in GTD? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the same racetrack, very different car. But anyone who comes out of that series and runs up front, if you can run in the front of a Mazda MX5 Cup, you can run in the front anywhere. Um, it, it's just such a great series. You know, Robbie won the here as well. Um, and we're hoping that we can win today in a GTD car. How crazy is it with the traffic? Because there's not only all these other GTD cars for you to worry about, the faster cars are coming through like crazy too. Yeah, I mean, you know, the GTP cars take a bit longer to get going, so they kind of have to lunge at you. Um, the P2 cars are a bit more grunty, but, uh, you know, it's not all pro lineups there. So it's just knowing who's in the car and what to expect. And, you know, some, sometimes you just have to make them go the long way and figure it out for themselves. Well, hey, great job out there so far. Fingers crossed for you. Yeah, thank you. If you're tuning in for the first time this weekend, particularly if you're on our world feed at TV, no blocks uh, all the way, no bricks, excuse me, all the way through to the end, you will have noticed some new dark tarmac around various parts of the circuit. Certainly, uh, Jesse Young has spotted that. Changes made by the circuit uh, to help with drainage and runoff so that the track doesn't get contaminated. Um, it has been used to exit the turns uh, five uh, and particularly turn nine, and the race control are monitoring that very, very carefully. The planned repave of the whole track, which I think would have uh, taken in some changes uh, on the outskirts of the track as well for that drain, those drainage purposes, that's not yet happened. Uh, the weather in this part of California over the last few months has been somewhat less than conducive to laying a new racing surface. And the, in fact, even the new walkover bridge uh, from uh, across to the, the infield at the start-finish line. Uh, that's been put in, but it's not yet been finished. John Ferrano in the tyres. That's turn number five, uh, turn number six, excuse me. 142 still to go, and the full course yellow is out again. This is the driver that won his class here last year, and the orange 
and black number eight is in the wall and we'll see the Porsche safety car again. Damage to the right front there at turn five. Right, Jeremy, who, if anybody, does this help since we didn't seem to be that long under green flag conditions? In GTP, it certainly helps Matty Campbell. He can get back on, in ter on terms now with, with the other contenders. He was a fair way back there, having served that penalty uh, a while ago for the incident responsibility. So it'll certainly help him. Uh, anybody else? No, not really. Uh, the uh, LMP2 cars uh, are all you know, running as they are. It'll, what, what this will do mean is that I'm sure we'll see most of the LMP2 cars onto pit lane now. The uh, top four that had not stopped before well, everybody will, will change drivers now because they're they're. Uh, well, no, are we? No, we're only we're t still ten minutes short of the one hour mark for LMP2, so it's still too early for them to change their drivers. But um, here's a, a replay of what happened. The brake car goes down the inside of Dennis Anderson, pushes him wide at the exit. Oh, that's a bit naughty. That was a turn eleven. That was uh, yeah. several laps ago, uh, and I wonder if there for there was a wee bit of. Uh, damage on the uh, right front steering arm that uh, was the problem. Ushered off the racetrack there, wasn't he, James yeah, Anderson? I think he might, uh, if that car comes back, that might be a, a penalty for John Ferrano there. He was alongside, but he, the rules in IMSA racing is if you're alongside each other, you must give each other room. Now, easier said than done, absolutely, I understand that, uh, but... Uh, that means you have to, if necessary, you've got to give way at some point. And I've, you know, we've said this in the past, Jeremy, at some point you've got to accept that the other car has got to turn into the corner or go round the corner. And, and that's the idea of saying give people a car's width on the exit. They're not going to get beamed up by Scotty, are they? No, they're not. A question from yeah. Kev Hamilton on uh, Ben Keating. Ben Keating doing things in LMP2 that Ben Keating does. How is he still a bronze driver? Always astonished by how he gets into any car in his fast. Can we ever see him being a silver? Certainly seems like a bronze plus plus. Kev, I think unless he's given a factory, a full paid factory drive, he can never be anything than a bronze because of when he started racing and because of his age. That, that, those are the regs, them's the regs. Um, we've got people like Martin Brundle now, uh, who is aged down to a bronze driver, as is Stefan Johansson. Uh, and because Ben started his racing career so late in life, Jeremy, uh, Johnny O'Connell's another bronze driver now as well, of course, because of his age. Because Ben started so late in life uh, and because of his age now, I don't think he can ever be uh, promoted uh, up through the ranks. No, I think so. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's a few other drivers that are, there are as quick as, as Ben. As we showed that yesterday qualifying here, George Kurtz. Oh, George Kurtz, uh, he's come on leaps and bounds. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Um, great to see that the essential essence of sports car and endurance racing, which goes back to the dawn of motor racing itself, was not just about professional drivers. Uh, quite often, wealthy amateurs would buy a car and let a pro drive it. Um, they would sometimes, in two driver races, race it itself. That goes back to the very dawn of motor racing. It's really now only in terms of top class racing for the biggest prizes and it's some of the biggest races in motorsport. We think of the Rolex 24, the uh, Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring, Le Mans itself. These are some of the only races where a non-pro driver, if they've got the wherewithal and they do the work, can jump into a car, Jeremy, and, and go and enjoy themselves and compete in categories where they're up against literally the very best drivers in those cars in the world. I think that's astonishing. And I think, you know, long may that continue. It's the absolute essence of this part of the sport. It, it is. I, 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 uh, I, compl I completely agree with you. Uh, it is uh, it, it, that that is you know one of the reasons why uh, endurance racing is so cool because you get all these drivers uh, with different capabilities, uh, uh, both raising money and skill levels, but they can all race together, uh, and it does create a lot of opportunities for talented youngsters that don't have otherwise have the money well, to go racing. That's a very good point, Jeremy, because they're. 
these uh, non-pro drivers will bring a lot of money into the sport uh, and uh, not everybody can get the leg up that Aaron Johnson has had the last uh, couple of seasons with uh, uh, with cash prizes where they are. Cash prizes in motorsport, very unusual uh, nowadays. So being able to fund a car for an up-and-coming driver who's doing some mentoring, doing some uh, instruction on the fly even uh, with uh, some of these uh, non-pro drivers, very, very important indeed. Pits are open for the prototypes and the pro drivers take the opportunity to come straight into the pit lane. Cheeky little look up the inside of the leader by Connor de Felipe there as they hit the pit lane speed limiter. The BMW trying to go up the left-hand side of Pete Motorani. Shea Adam is standing by. I hear the wheel guns in the background. Uh, it's probably because Connor de Felipe realizes if a penalty were to be served, it wouldn't be him doing it. Nick Galloway taking over the 25 BMW with sticker tires going on that car. Sticker tires for the sister car as well, and Augusta Farfus taking over the number 24. Sticker tires also for the 0-1 Cadillac Racing entry. That looks like they are just giving a drinks bottle, so no driver change there. Fuel only for the Meyer Shank Racing Acura. Colin Brown staying behind the wheel for now. He doesn't want to chat with me yet. Pippo Durrani is still installed in the Whalen Engineering Cadillac. Pink clothes light is on. No tires for Whalen. No tires for either of the Porsches. Uh, actually, I say that. They did a tire pressure adjustment for the number seven, and there were no tires as well for the Conic Minolta Acura. So the order leaving the pits should be the 60 out in front, then Pippo Durrani, then Ricky Taylor, then one of the Porsches. I think that was the 6, 25 BMW, 7, 0, 1, 24, and then the JDC Porsche as the first LMP2 car back off the lane was once again George Kurtz in the 0 4 crowd strike by APR. Thank you, Shit. Uh, down there in the pit lane, usual efficient stops. Now. Yeah, and uh, John, you asked who this uh, caution benefits. Uh, at the front of the field, not really anybody other than the number seven car that was able to close up on everybody else as they have to wait there in the pit exit yeah. for the pits to be open while all the other cars are on the track go through. But what it does help is those drivers in GTD that had already made their pit stops and driver change and had been able to stay on the lead lap because now they will stay out or possibly come in for a splash of fuel, but uh, they will still uh, cycle through ahead of the vast majority of cars that are coming in ahead of them that have not uh, that have not yet changed drivers. Yeah. Wicker Bill putting Emmanuel Collard in that same bronze category. Absolutely right. And Nick says, how do you repave the corkscrew? Surely it's more of a plastering job with that kind of incline. <laughs> That's a very fair point. Well made. Anybody from WeatherTech Raceway like to respond to that? All right, the GT Pro and GTD cars coming in the pit lane. Shay Adam has more callers in front of her training shoes. Wouldn't you just pour the, the uh, pavement and let it kind of filter down in its own natural form? I think that's how that works. All right, we've got lots of pit stops going on. For the Lexus's fuel and tires. No driver change for the 14, but a driver change for the 12. Frank Montecalvo out. Aaron Tealis finds aboard. Fuel only for the WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. Fuel tire driver change for the number three Corvette. That is now Antonio Garcia with the first car back off the lane is the number 23 S Martin for Harder Racing, followed closely by its sister car, the number 20. I don't think either of those cars did tires. Full service for the Paul Miller Racing BMW, but Madison Snow stays aboard. Full service for the AO Racing Porsche, but I think I saw Sebi Priu jumping out of that one, and Gunnar Jeanette finally aboard. Now the green light goes on, and people can filter back out. Patrick Pile, most notably, aboard the FAF Porsche as well. And the first car out here was Alec Riberas in the heart of racing. First car out of the stoppers, that is, the number 23. Then it was Frederick Chandoff for Inception Racing. Roman De Angelis for Heart of Racing, the number 27. So two GTD cars uh, in amongst the pros. Then Tonio Garcia. This is his 100th point scoring race for Corvette Racing. He has actually been uh, in 
the car 101 times at IMSA uh, races, but uh, one of those at Detroit, if I remember rightly, the car was running outside of competition. What we didn't know then was uh, it was uh, running the kind of spec it is in now, although it was still in the old GT Le Mans, uh, GT uh, E specification, and uh, they ran out of competition. And uh, that, therefore, was not a non-point scoring race. So that's, is, that's why it's a 100th uh, point scoring outing in IMSA for Antonio Garcia. Fantastic milestone for the very affable uh, Spaniard who is, well, he's, he's just been a staple part of this paddock for so long and does not get any slower, does he, Jeremy? <laughs> No, and uh, yeah, Bill Orblin uh, met that, uh, reached that milestone a couple of races ago, by the way. Uh, but uh, Antonio is the first, uh, is the second driver to get to the 100 start milestone. So Big change around there in GTP ranks with uh, Colin Brown uh, going from fourth before the pit stops to first this time. He went from first to where did he go? After the oh, first dropped down to uh, sixth or seventh, yeah, because yeah, they six, took tyres and nobody else did. Position. That's right. Both the Acuras took tyres, the number 10 car as well for Philippe Albuquerque. So I presume this time all they did was fueled up, uh, and I'm guessing Pete Moore took some tyres. Uh, yeah, I'm hearing that is correct. Uh, fuel only for people as well. So uh, actually, that was just a really big turnaround, and well done. Big tick in the box for. The uh, guys on the number uh, six wall that did that. I wonder if they maybe just short filmed and timed it to get him the track position. Might have. Uh, we've got a car that's gone behind the wall. Team Court of Motorsport, Mercedes number 32, the AMG GT3. She is off to uh, investigate. Just a wee update. Really bad look early on with the uh, number six. Number 66 NSX got some more news on that from the man at the uh, top of gradient racing. Uh, Andres Cruz done an incredible job. It's drivable but far from optimal. About staying out, getting as many points as possible. Uh, 19 points they got for qualifying. Maybe if they get 150 for 15th, that would be 169 in total. That assumes that they do get to the finish and nobody else has problems. Uh, caught off behind the wall, Shea Adam, what's the problem for the AMG GT3 number 32? Broken left rear suspension before they came in for the pit stop. They have gone back to the garage, they're looking to fix it and get back out and do exactly what Gradient's doing, claim as many points as they can. Interesting, uh, this early in the season, Jeremy, uh, uh, the, just how many people are uh, saying, look, points make prizes at the end of the year. Uh, we understand it's problematical, but we've got another long race to come. That's the next time we get everybody together at the sale and six hours of the Glen. And then, of course, Petit Le Mans at the end of the season. Uh, a, bad, a bad finish is a bad finish, but it's not necessarily the quote-unquote end of the season. Indeed not, no, still a long way to go. Uh, in uh, in this in this year, but to curious that that car should have the problem. It was running yeah, pretty very competitively there, right behind the number 12 uh, Vassar Sullivan Lexus before that uh, pit stop sequence. So it uh, I don't, don't know when that suspension problem manifested itself. It seems to be running just fine before the caution period. Uh, Kev Hamilton asking how many IMSA drivers are at Le Mans this year. We answered that earlier on. Uh, Kev, but uh, I'm sure she will tell us again. I think she said there was 30 out of 78 here uh, are going. How many yes. in total that have done a race this year in IMSA are going to be at the Circuit de la Sarte on the first weekend and the second weekend of June, Shep? I think it was 46% of the grid has competed in at least one IMSA race in the 2023 season. And 30 out of 78 here, uh, my mind wasn't... Uh, deceiving me on that one. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. So there you go, uh, Kev. Thank you for letting us know. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us, rather too many stop starts at the moment as the tower car is on the back of the rollback. A bit of a tricky 
recovery for that car. Broken front suspension wasn't helping things at all there. But we have cycled through a full set of pit stops and the prototypes will now go to the front of the field. Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, just uh, drive time for uh, LMP2. Uh, the fact that it was it was a bit close uh, coming in when the uh, LMP2 cars came into the pits to to to, to uh, on this during this caution period as to whether the drivers had met the one hour minimum. Uh, it, the the guys who had not stopped during that first period, when there were four of them, the number 52, 51, 35, and 11, they should be fine. The, the, the other ones, though, were a bit marginal. And uh, the number 18 car, I think, made one extra stop during this caution period for before Ryan DL hopped aboard in place of Dwight Merrin, because that car was one of the ones that did come into the pits earlier on. It also served a drive-through penalty, too, so they had to make sure they'd met that minimum one hour of drive time. Yeah, and, and the point that you're making there, Jeremy, just to underline it as the yellow submarine, the banana boat, comes back into the pit lane for JDC Miller, the number five, new to the uh, new to the championship this weekend. That's just a top off to push it further in the race. The, the point, and the reason that's important that Jeremy's mentioning that again, and if you didn't catch this earlier on, that time in the pit lane does not count to your drive time. So if uh, if you come in and do a pit stop and then come in again exactly on the hour, then the amount of time that you spent in that first pit stop does not count. So you need to do that extra two minutes and 15 seconds or whatever it was uh, to the to make sure that you'll fulfil the drive time. Uh, Mike Rottenfeller now, by the way, aboard the JDC Miller car. He's waiting for the light to turn green, which it does now at the end of the pit lane. And he is uh, back off and into the race. That was a couple of seconds yeah, ago. Yeah, and, uh, and he came out to, at the tail end of the whole field here, but before we go back to green, he will they have the opportunity to move past all the uh, all the other cars, including the GT cars and the, pro the LMP2 cars, to haul up onto the back end of the field in GTP. So uh, that's... Uh, you know, nothing, nothing lost there whatsoever by making that pit stop. Only, only a gain for the number five team. A free pit stop, effectively, is what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we talked about in our Porsche keys to the race, as that was a Porsche that seems reasonable about fuel and tyres. Well, it's not just about how much you use, but when you put them on or put the fuel back in, and, and basically they're extending their window in that car. They know they're not in the really in the overall fight. If they are, they'll be absolutely delighted. What they want to do is get to the end with as little strife as possible and put some miles under the Michelin tyres and uh, into that 4.6 V8 twin turbo engine to get them some more experience before we head to a four hour race next time out. Coming back to the green. Stand by for action again, ladies and gentlemen. Colin Brown and people to Ronnie. Ding, ding, second out, round two. Philippe Albuquerque in there as well. This could get fruity. Uh, the leading pair have a brilliant jump off turn number 11. Here comes Durrani to the outside. Leaves off the brake till really late. Now locks it up. Goes around the outside. We'll have the inside for the next corner, but can't make that one stick. Albuquerque in the blue fronted car having a little look there at the leader's big defensive move to the inside of turn three by Colin Brown cut right across the nose of the Brazilian in the wheel and engineering car. Now they're side by side as they go into the next right hander. So that was turn three into turn four, now to turn five. Durrani must feel as though he's got to do this early. The two a Porsche Penske Motorsport machine, seven and eight side by side. Uh, seven and uh, six side by side. So where's Nick Yellowly gone? Well, yes, he's dropped back a position. So that was a position made up by Philippe Nasser there. And he's now right with Nick Tandy. And there are battling right the way down that top seven or eight GTPs, which are all together 
Mike Rockefeller just off the back of those lead cars. Oh, off for a Porsche and into the wall, into an unguarded part of the wall at Rainey. It's the number seven, Philip Nasser. He needs to cut across the, the circuit here at turn number 10. He can't get into the pits. There's too much traffic. Debris coming from the back of the car on the right-hand side. Nasser may have done more damage than he thinks there. He's slapped the concrete wall as he ran very wide and there's a huge piece of bodywork about to detach itself uh, from the rear deck exposing bits that we don't really expect to be seeing on that Porsche but he couldn't physically get the car across the track there was so much traffic there and again the right hand side of the rear deck flaps up it looks like a 1930 sports car where you lifted up half of the front of the car to expose the engine except it's on the rear deck and that was a high-speed incident there on the restart. Amazingly, Jeremy Shaw, it seems as though the uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the car underneath that is fine. It was a big wobble coming down through Rainey that just pinched the car off, and he went off onto the gravel at almost unabated speed. There was no, in fact, there was no slowing down there, was he? Slapped the wall on the right-hand side. Lucky not to have done some suspension or driving damage. He turned in, and the back end just sliding away, and he got a couple of little wobbles, and then just missed the end of the tyres and hit the unguarded concrete. Big, big moment for the number seven uh, and for its driver, Felipe Naza. Yeah, just trying to carry a bit too much speed on coal tyres. I think coming down the hill, their car got away from him. As you say, there'll be quite a lot of damage to that car. So he's going to finally now get it back to the pit lane, but uh, I'm not sure he's going to be going much further. It's not been a banner day, has it, for the Porsche Penske official works entries. It's the car with the blue lights to the front of it. There's a change for the lead, by the way. Uh, people Tarani did get through, yes, as he went across the line while we were keeping an eye on what's going on. Shea's going to keep uh, an eye on what's going on in the pit lane. That looks like it's going to have to be a full rear deck change, Shay. Oh, gosh. It's a lot more than that, though, John. They've got the equipment ready for the rear deck and for the tail, but the problem is the nose of the car is damaged, too. The splitter at the front of the car that goes underneath it is missing a sizable chunk. It almost looks like an angry chipmunk has had its way. I'm seeing wiring underneath the bottom of the car as well that is normally hidden within the brake duct. The number panel has been wiped away completely. This is a very big hit for the car. They've actually pulled Nasser out. They put a seat insert back in. I just saw Matty Campbell sitting on top of the pit box though i don't know why that would be happening now they've noticed they need to change the nose as well right hand side suspension they need to check it they said it's okay at the rear i would be worried about the front i'm not sure which driver is going to be getting back in this car though john felipe nasser standing on the wall shaking his head but this is not a happy day for penske and especially not when tim Sindrick is sitting on the box of the number seven which is the car that's sitting in front of me Possibly good practice for things they may have to do in a few weeks' time at Le Mans. The T-bars going in front and rear, that those are the tools that unfasten the major pieces of bodywork. Definitely a thumbs up from the mechanic on the two suspension mounts. And is that the same driver getting back in again, uh, Shea Adam? It looks very no. much so. And it looks like Matty Campbell. They've uh, called okay. him off the pit box. He was sitting up there a couple seconds ago, quite relaxed, and now he's got his helmet on, his gloves right. on, and he is being stripped in. There is a problem as well, though, John, because there is a uh, wiring that is hanging out between the engine cover and then the bottom piece, the solid piece of the tub. That is right. going to flip around, and Jim Fowler is actually having a look at that right now, trying to decide if it's legal to go back out on the track. Jim is one of our hard-working IMSA pit lane team. Jeremy uh, mentioned that Pete Motorani had taken the lead. He hasn't just taken the lead, he's cleared off into the distance, so has there been a problem for Colin Brown? Because he's dropped now into the clutches of Philippe Albuquerque. Uh, they were all pretty much together as uh, Pete Motorani trying to get through in that uh, Cadillac. And big sideways moment coming out of turn number three for Colin Brown and people sliding through and he's cleared off. He's cleared off to 
the two, Jeremy Short, nearly seven seconds. Yeah, in two laps. I mean, he pulled out four seconds on the previous lap, another 2.3 seconds on this last lap over Colin Brown in second position. Uh, and he's on, on each of those two last two laps, he'd set a new fastest lap of the race. One minute 16.42 uh, for uh, Pipo Durrani. He's absolutely checked out. That's amazing how much of an advantage he has over Colin Brown at the moment, who's really struggling. Uh, I, we, I think uh, we heard, didn't we, that he didn't change tyres at that last stop, and that is costing him dearly now, I think. So, well, I just, we're just checking with Whelan Engineering, and Shea Adam is actually at their pit box now. Are we sure, Shea, that they did not give uh, people tyres at that last stop? Oh, no, they gave people four tyres. It was just a blitzingly fast stop. So they gave people rubber, but definitely Colin was fuel only. That car stayed on the ground the entire stop. Yeah, that makes sense then. Thank you, Shit. Uh, the performance differential, differential, Jeremy, in that last couple of laps is stunning. Uh, the yeah. fastest lap of the race is 16.421, 16.438 from people last time around. Both those times his, by the way. That's two and a half seconds quicker than Colin Brown and yeah. nearly three seconds quicker than Philippe Albuquerque. Side-by-side -side contact. Faf Porsche on the Lamborghini. Oh, dear, that was a bit naughty as well. Patrick Pile now behind the wheel of the Faf machine and Loris Spinelli in the Fortnier powered by US Racetronics Lamborghini getting a side-by-side -side swipe heading up the hill from turn five. This is all getting a bit physical and a bit feisty, Jeremy. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of contact going on out there, isn't there? But isn't it amazing, the uh, the differential in speed there between the Pippa Durrani and the rest of the prototype uh, field are all bottled up behind Colin Brown, including, it should be said, the LP2 cars that are in that train of cars behind Colin Brown, basically. There's not much of a separation at all. There's none between Augusto Farfus and Ben Hanley, maybe about a second, less than that. Uh, right behind Ben Hanley is Mikkel Jensen, who's just set the fastest lap of the race in uh, LMP2 at 118.361, uh, which is quicker than uh, Augusto. Uh, uh, it was a tenth or so slower than, than uh, Augusto Farfus oh. in a GTP car on that last lap. But uh, yeah, on, on the used tyres, the GTP cars are struggling. Yeah, and Colin Brown now dropping into the clutches of the uh, zero, uh, the zero one Cadillac as Albuquerque. Uh, is looming large in the distance as well. So people Durrani by 10 seconds from Colin Brown. Uh, and then it is uh, the battle between Colin and Renga van der Zander. Renga, who had an horrendous crash in the WEC at Spa a couple of weekends ago. The car snapping sideways on him, going up the hill from Eau Rouge to Radion. That's never a good set of circumstances, and it uh, was an unplanned and spontaneous uh, disintegration of that car, dismembering of that car. That was what they said about the SpaceX rocket, wasn't it? But that was uh, that yeah. was a very disassembly. Very disassembly. 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 Thank you. Rap yeah. yeah. Rapid disassembly, wasn't it? It was Brilliant. rapid. It was rapid disassembly. That's not one of their <laughs> Le Mans cars. Uh, that is not one of their Le Mans cars. Uh, by the way, if you it's uh, the track here this weekend, and you want to see a car that is going to Le Mans, uh, did notice in the uh, paddock earlier on that the wheel and engineering Le Mans car, not the car that's out on the track now because it's a slightly different spec required for the ACO rules racing, but the car that the wheel and will be racing at Le Mans is in the paddock and it's wearing its full Le Mans livery, including the uh, 331 number that it will, uh, 311, excuse me, uh, number that it will be wearing at Le Mans in a couple of weekends' time. Just sitting there, minding its own business, not barrier her off or anything like that. So, brilliant yeah. that that car is here before it gets shipped. Just to get uh, in GTD, of course, those uh, drivers that made their pit stop before that caution period were all out in front, didn't need to come in during that caution. Uh, and so it's the two Kelly Moss with Riley cars that leaded GTD. Uh, number 92 of Alec Udell ahead of Kai Van Berlo 
in Carnival 91. Uh, third is uh, Bill Oberlin. Well, the two Turner Motorsport BMWs have also stopped and made driver changes. Bill Oberlin is next, followed by Robbie Foley. Then it's the first of the GTD Pro cars. Uh, Alex Riberas, followed by Frederick Frank Shandorf in the McLaren, non-pro. Then Antonio Garcia in the Corvette. Uh, and then Roman DeAndres in a non-pro, part of racing team Aston Martin. So they're all intermingled there, but it's the four non-pro GTDs at, at the head of the field there. But the battle in GT, in LMP2, uh, they're taking it to the GTP cars here. I mean, there, there's nothing between them at all now. There's a big train of about half a dozen cars, including GTPs and LMP2s. I love that. That's why we love this racing, uh, isn't it? True. Uh, people now ten and a half seconds uh, to the good and more traffic and, also, by and the more way, battles down the field Jeremy just a moment we'll get back to you in a second Nick Tandy has his mirrors full of not one but two team RLL BMWs coming out of the final corner they go through traffic and the man from Bedfordshire in the centre of England has got his hands full with Nick Yellily and Augusto Farfas, fifth, sixth and seventh, close as you like, down into the first corner and behind them they've just gone past a great battle in LMP2 as well. Little scraps all over the field at the moment with Paul Loup Chatan hassling the back of Mikkel Jensen. The 52 wins car in third place in LMP2. Mikkel Jensen in the 11 TDS. And just ahead of them, the crowd strike racing leading LMP2. The 0 4 ben, ben Hanley has now taken that car over. So three two car battles one in GTP and one in LMP2. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the 0 4 car leads, as you say, but by inches over number 11 car of Mikkel Jensen and Paul Luke Shatter. It's a super battle, isn't it? Uh, meanwhile, there was a change for. Uh, for second place, now Renge van der Zander has moved himself. First of all, he got past the number zero one, uh, excuse me, he, he passed the uh, number 10 car of Philip Abergroen. Now he's also got past Colin Brown as well. In fact, both of those three passed Colin Brown. So the Renge van der Zander in the Cadillac uh, for Cadillac racing car number zero one now up into second position. Uh, and uh, we'll see whether he can make any inroads into the lead that's currently held by Pippa Durrani. Cadillac one, two. Live coverage of WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in the Motul Corsa de Monterey, powered by Hyundai. Around the US on Sirius XM 207, around the world on RS2, IMSA Radio, and in sound and vision for those outside the US, where you can be watching it on NBC Network. And we are on the world feed, IMSA.TV, or, of course, via imsaradio.com use the menu on the top left and select live video full coverage of all the support races as well from this weekend if you weren't with us earlier on all live all free and plus live coverage live free coverage here in the US and further afield of the WeatherTech qualifying <laughs> as well which was brilliant to watch over this weekend and that's the same for all the races through the season no subscription required for that coverage. Jeremy is giggling in the background, which makes this a proper race, uh, by the way, because of this battle for 5th, uh, 6th and 7th. Nick Tandy, Nick Yellily and Augusto Farfus, they'll be absolutely loving this and they're catching Colin Brown as well. So now yeah, Colin, Colin, Brown, Brown. Yeah, Colin Brown is in real trouble grip-wise as we get a BMW and a Porsche side by side in turn number 11 and then a huge gaggle of cars from I think three different classes LMP2, GTD Pro and GTM TDS off of the circuit as well this is the uh, number 34 car and that machine has regained the circuit, it was at turn 10 and TDS then with uh, some issues and that was uh, Guido van der Gaard at 35, I think I said 34 there excuse me, 35 right car, wrong number, uh, just giggling, I'm sure, Tandy, Yellily and Farfus, who are now right with Colin Brown, who is struggling for forward progress at the moment, having been battling for the lead, what, not 10 laps ago, it seems, Jeremy, that, that performance differential between new and used tyres, absolutely huge. Mine, yeah. we did say that the Agaris had pushed on pretty hard, pretty fast when they came out of the pit lane. I wonder if they overused their tyres when they first came out. That could also be an issue. Well, yes, it could. 
uh, and uh, it's certainly going to be there's, there's going to be big ebbs and flows during this race because of course they only have three sets of tires to use for, uh, including from qualifying yesterday we know how big target degradation in here is here as we see side by side again almost three wide now heading towards the start finish line All side by side and either side of the corvette tandy goes to the left and Brown went to the right. Now he has to cut inside the inception. McLaren down to turn one. Tandy has moved up. Tandy has moved up into fourth position. Colin Brown fifth at the moment, but he's going to get eaten up very quickly by two RLL BMWs. Here they come, round the outside of turn three. And through goes Nick Yellily. Farfus, he's going to go down the inside of turn four. Makes it. Oh, my goodness me. It's like a Gran Turismo challenge where you've got to pass 26 cars in a lap. And these cars are on a 10 at the moment their strategy Jeremy absolutely now has to be drive as fast as they can and get up the road when they can as they've got this performance advantage in the tyres brilliant stuff and in fact Colin Brown was off the track on the right hand side as he went past the Corvette absolutely wild and, and right behind this lot by the way uh, the change of lead there in NP2 with Paul Luc Chatin uh, now into the lead of the class and the 0-1 of Ben Hanley down into third position. He's also been, not only been passed by Michael Jensen, but also Mike Rockefeller in the GTP JDC car. He's moving up through the field. He could be challenging the factory cars fairly shortly. We've already had one. Yeah. Antonio Garcia, by the way, was the leader of GTD Pro, although he's sixth in the GT category. Shit, Adam, you've got some callers at the back end of the GTD Pro field um, that might be taking a bit of a gamble here. 66 minutes to go. Who's in the pit lane? It's too soon. It's way too soon. Uh, we've just had the 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin, Alex Ramirez, who has led a good chunk of this race in the GT Pro class into the pit lane. He's staying here because finally Ross Gunn is being employed. Fuel and new tires for that Aston Martin and also into the pit lane with a bit of damage on the nose was the FAF Porsche. That car, which already had Patrick Pile installed behind the wheel a couple, uh, well, I think it was one stop ago. They did fuel and tires as well. But now I'm watching Corvette. Mercedes and Lexus, no movement on their walls, so they want to get a little bit further before they feel comfortable making it to the end of this race. I think you're right, Shea. I think it's too far. Uh, just a, a quick note to all the uh, enthusiastic fans who are interacting on Twitter, on the Facebook Collective, and, of course, on Discord, keeping our responsible adults uh, busy. And I'll tell you now... Start making notes, because I think we're going to have a very busy Michelin post-race tech. The end of the race, signified by the chequered flag, is just the start of the discussion afterwards. Get your questions, points arising or observations on Twitter, please. Hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio. And we'll use that to drive the editorial of the show after the checkered flag later on yeah. this afternoon. There's going to be plenty to talk about, Jeremy, as Colin Brown is really struggling for grip now. He, he yeah. can barely keep up with LMP2 and GT no. cars. With GT cars, that's the point, yeah, because he's been overtaken by, by uh, several of the leaders now in uh, LMP2 and also by Mike Rockenfeller. Here come Pitsots now with, what, uh, 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 64 minutes remaining. I guess that was a whole bunch of GTT teams that reckon they can get to the end from here. Let's go, let's go to uh, Shea Adam, who's watching this, and some interesting strategy playing out here, Shea. The Lexus have struggled for grip at this racetrack historically, leading to them never getting a top five finish in the GTD class. Well, Aaron Tielitz is going to have his work cut out for him because they did not give him tires on that stop. We have just had stops with fuel and tires for Volt Racing, for Bright Motorsport, excuse me, in the number 77, the 78, which is the USRT Lamborghini, and Windward Racing. All three of those cars did fuel and tires. The Lexus didn't. Oh, wow. So fuel only for that Lexus. Wow. OK, yeah. In comes the GTD leader, Alec Udell. In the number 92, Kelly Moss with Riley. This is the fat Buddha car. And now, when was that car last in the pits? That's 44 laps, so that's about, Jeremy Shaw, a, a full stint. So I'm not sure they could have gone any further. They, this might be out of necessity for these GTD and GTD Pro cars, rather than a tactical ploy to get to the end of the race. 
Uh, I think it's a tactical ploy to get to the end of the race, but uh, they're certainly taking a bit, bit of a gamble on the, on the fuel. Uh, and you know, if there's a full course caution, that'll help them for sure. And that was no tyres. No tyres for the 92 car. Yeah. So, wow. We'll get some, uh, not many driver changes either, so not many people for sure to talk to, but we'll see what we can do about uh, dragging up one or two of the uh, pit lane staff from the teams on this tactics. Big chunk out of the right front of the Lexus number 14. That was uh, when that car clipped the back of the gradient machine earlier on. That car's been a bit, the gradient car's back out has been a bit of a magnet for other vehicles. Ross Gunn puts in the fastest GTD Pro lap of the race at 24.9 in the heart of racing Aston Martin. They were one of the first ones to come in on this pit cycle. Bit of sideways weaving by the number 92. Julian Andler in that car. Now, that would suggest to me that they, in fact, have got new tyres. Here comes the number 91, Kai van Berlo, Kelly Mossmith Riley, and it is a full stop sticker Michelin's going on to that dark grey and black machine, Jeremy. They're all going for it here in GT and GTD. Extraordinary to think. Now, now we're only about an hour and a minute away by the time this car comes out of the pit lane. That, I think, is more doable uh, with a full pit stop and full fuel load. Agreed, but, uh, but if there is a full course caution, of course, that'll play into those, uh, into the hands of those who have already made their pit stops a, a lap or two ago. Fascinating. Corvette are, are they is banking in. on a caution? The, uh, well, that's dangerous, isn't it? Corvette yeah. in and out, and drama in the pit lane. Shea Adam, penalty's coming. Inception Racing just left the box and then left their fuel hose about three quarters of the way down the pit lane. That was a very, very dangerous moment. And now we've got a massive fuel spill and that goes through several pit boxes. It was fuel and tires for Corvette Racing as they came in. And now we're anticipating some of the GTP stops as well. Well, these, these, this all could be going towards our BDO, Accounting Tax and Advisory Services knows Strategy Award will be handing that out before the end of the race. Now the GTPs coming into play as well. The number six Porsche, Nick Tandy, gets full service at a new set of Michelins with a brand new. Uh, looks like there might have been also full service for Colin Brown for... Acura, and they're a set of lightly scrubbed tyres for that Acura. Door was open for a very long time there. I didn't see Colin Brown get out of that car. Has Tom Blanc has been in that car yet? Uh, I think he did a stop. No. no. He hasn't been in, has he? No. Um, didn't they stop? Didn't they change this then? Um, I. Yeah, yeah, they, they did. They must yeah. have. They yeah. yeah, they must have, yeah. Colin Brown is out of the car. Big flat stop spot on the left front tyre for people. Durrani as he's coming to the pit lane from the lead. So Renga van der Zander for the 0-1 Cadillac, the goal-fronted car, takes the lead for the time being. But of course, the requisite pit stops uh, need to be gone through uh, for him as well. Working and, in fact, here comes the, the 10 car, Philippe Albuquerque, Mike Rockefeller in as well for JDC Miller. Well, Jeremy, have you worked this one out yet? Because I've got to say it. Um, I've, I haven't seen the script yet, and I've got no clue what's going on at the front of this GTP field. This is going to come down to who looks after their tyres for possibly yeah. a last 10-lap stint. We've seen huge differentials in performance. Yeah, and do they think they can get a full hour on a stint here oh. to get to the end? I guess they do. Um, but uh, to do so, they're going to have to manage their tyres, like you said, because we saw oh. how much Colin Brown was struggling. Alex Sims in the dirt, coming out of the pit lane. There and the 31, go. that's not what you need. That's not what you need at all. Time lost and dirty tyres. Oh, my goodness. Fuel this and tyres. fascinating motor race. Oh, this is absolutely superb. <laughs> I just want to go back to some... Before it all explodes again, I just want to go back to... Something earlier on, we had the Tower Motorsport number eight car uh, in the wall at turn five and uh, just been waiting for, for word there. John uh, was uh, not able to get out of the car he's on, he was assisted out of that car and John Ferrano has been taken to the local hospital for further evaluation. If we get any more news, we'll let you know. There's been an incident on the front straight. 
Green, yellow flags at turn 11, and it's Aaron Teelitz. I think, who didn't take tyres. He was moving very slowly on the pit lane side. Oh, he's off. He's off to the right-hand side. This could be a full-course caution, and this will really throw the cat amongst the pigeons. The number 12 uh, is stopped. Nose into the wall, driver's right. I thought I saw a car spinning on the front straight. Now, can Aaron find reverse gear? There's a bit of room for him to turn and get in. Uh, has he had a... Hell, he's right rear suspension damage. Right rear suspension damage on the GTD version as in comes Renger van der Zander from the lead of the race. Whether he wanted to or not, this is a smart move, Jeremy. It looks yeah, like he's right at the end of his stint anyway. Yeah, anticipating, well, not necessarily at the end of his stint, but the beginning, perhaps, of his final stint. Uh, because uh, if there's a full course caution, you want to get onto the pit lane. So that's what he has done. Also, what number 25 car has done. Uh, and those are the last of the GTP cars to come onto the pit lane during this sequence of stops because the uh, number 24 uh, BMW was in last time around. Was that brand new tyre share, Adam, that went on the Cadillac 01? Looked like it. Very shiny tyres as Paul Miller Racing also made it in for the pit stop that they needed to make. Brian Sellers installed behind the wheel of that car, new tyres for them as well. But the 24 BMW, 25 BMW coming in, it's one with a little bit more blue, fuel and scrubbed tyres for that one. So very different strategies in terms of getting heat into the tyres about to be employed by the BMW versus the Ganassi Cadillac. 92 Porsche, by the way, did take tyres, I'm hearing now. Julian Andlauer then, as the full course yellow has now come out with 56 minutes to go. Unfortunately, Aaron Tielitz has not been able to extricate the car from the dangerous position on the outside of turn 11. And breathe, everybody. Wow, what a stanza of the race that was, Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, it really was, wasn't it? Uh, that was fascinating to see how far, how much number 60 car was struggling on those old tyres. Wow, I mean, he was dropping back at uh, three or four seconds a lap there, Colin Brown, absolutely nothing he could do about it. Uh, finally, uh, he was given the signal to bring that car into pit lane and uh, make the driver change, so Tom Blomqvist will finish out the race from here. And uh, with this, it's going to be a... Yeah, it shouldn't be that long of a caution period. We're going to have to open the, the uh, pit stop so sequences. So it's going to be a, a while, and I think all the GTP cars can get to the end from here. The question is uh, how, how what state of their tyres going to be in for the final stint. For the LMP2s, some of them came in now and some didn't again uh, because uh, they can only do about 35, maybe 40 minutes on a stint, and we've still got 55 minutes to go in this race. So the longer they can stay out now, the better the opportunity, potentially, to get to the end without one more stop before the finish. Colin Brown, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Because that start where you went from third to first, that was impressive. Yeah, it was good, you know. Um, fun to get to qualify yesterday, and uh, I really enjoy starts and restarts. So, um, yeah, made the most of a good opportunity there, for sure. Um, yeah, these guys have been doing a great job. We, I think, are a little off sequence in the middle there on our tire situation. I think that's going to play into our hands here at the end, so I'm glad we got through kind of that middle rough stint, and now, uh, you know, I think we're being in a good spot here for the last little bit. You were out there on new tires and on scuff tires. Which one is better to have? Yeah, for me, it's scuffs on both. Um, I didn't really have new, so we got new on the car now, so I think uh, the new will be better for Tom, for sure. Can you feel that big of a difference between them? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can feel a big difference, and, um, you know, it's no secret, obviously, this place has a lot of tire to it so um you know you start to feel that certainly at the end of the run too and um yeah we got a fast car acura hpd guys and myra shank guys have done a good job and uh hopefully the strategy plays out fingers crossed thanks yeah brilliant stuff from colin brown uh just an update on that uh, inception hose part of it made it all the way uh, up the hill to the corkscrew uh, shedding parts all the way around the circuit there so that's definitely going to be a penalty and one or two cars very very quick out of turn 11 when we've got recovery and rescue going on on the outside of that corner and I'm uh, quite concerned by the speed the one or two particularly the GTD cars 
coming through there. Pass around, coming around, uh, uh, coming up now. Let's do you a quick VP Racing update then with uh, just on 53 minutes still to go. The LMP2 cars are at the front, but of course, they'll be shuffled back. But here's how the P2 stands. Mikkel Jensen for TDS Racing in the number 11 ahead of Ryan DL for Aero Motorsport, the mostly blue car in second. Ed Jones in third in LMP2 for High Class Racing, the red white number 20. Then Juan Pablo Montoya in the number 51 Rick Ware Racing car. Watch out, everybody. Juan Pablo's about. Then in fifth, it's Guido van der Garde for TDS Racing. Uh, and in sixth position, Paul Loop Shannon for PR1 Matheson Motorsport. In the GTPs, which will cycle to the front, uh, even after running off the circuit, coming out of the pits, Wheel and Engineering have held on to the lead. Uh, at the moment, at least, Alexander Sims in the 31 car will take it to the chequered flag in 52 minutes or thereabouts. In second, it is Renga van der Zander for Cadillac Racing, the 01 gold fronted car from Guido van der Garde. And TD, uh, for, sorry, he's in the TDS, isn't he? Uh, from Nick Yellowly in third position uh, in the 25 BMW M Team RLL. It's Nick Tandy in the number six Porsche Penske Motorsport in fourth position in GTP. Philippe Albuquerque will go to the end for the Konica Minolta Acura ARX O6 number 10. Augusta Farfus for BMW number 24. Mike Rockenfeller, what a run it's been for JDC Muller Motorsports in uh, seventh position in GTP. Eighth, Tom Blomqvist. Uh, and ninth after their problems, Matt Campbell and the number seven Porsche Penske Motorsport 963. But laps down uh, after the problems, eight laps down after the problems without those cars. In the GT categories, Andy Lally leads for Magnus Race and Aston Martin ahead of Kai von Berlo for Kelly Moss with Riley in the Porsche number 91. So that's 44 91, both GTD cars, but both now to the end with pro drivers, so it's open season in GTD. We'll sort out the class winners at the end. Ross Gunn is the first GTD pro car, the 23 Harder Racing Team Aston Martin. Bill Oberlin, very much a pro driver in the next of the GT cars uh, on the, the timing and scoring screen. That's the number 97 Turner Motorsport BMW. Then it's Tonio Garcia in the Corvette number three. Then it's Julian Andlauer in the Kelly Moss Riley Porsche number 92. Robbie Foley in the other turn of BMW, the 96. Trent Hinman uh, in uh, sixth place in GTD in the 77 Wright Motorsports. Seb Prio for AO Racing in the bright green uh, car. Oh, problem in the pit lane. The number 20 high class racing car has clipped a tyre that was laid out for Juan Pablo Montoya in the Rick Ware racing car. So that's going to be a penalty for one or other of those teams. Now, uh, oh, actually, he almost clipped the team member as he came in. It was the uh, r left rear wing of Ed Jones as he came in. So I think that will be a penalty on Ed Jones. You can't blame the uh, team member who was working out, working out with the tyre. So anyway, there you are. Before the class splits, uh, that is your VP Racing in race update. Very dangerous moment there, Jeremy Shaw, in the pit lane for Rick Ware, and uh, that's. Uh, Mechanic carrying the tyre for uh, Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah, that got his attention, didn't it? Gosh, I mean, it ripped that wheel right out of his hand, and uh, he was uh, thinking he was clear. You could quite just see the, see the surprise, not on his face necessarily, but just in his body language as that car was ripped out of his grasp. That was very scary indeed. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. Didn't get any fingers trapped up in anything there. But uh, boy, this is. Uh, this is just a fascinating motor. We've still got the LMP2 car out front. Uh, Mikkel Jensen has not yet made his pit stop under this caution period. He will need a stop for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, and the question is, how long is this caution period going to be? And uh, how much ground will he lose? Because he can lose a lot of track position to the other contenders that have already made their stops. The question then is, can they get to the end without stopping again or not? And in, in uh, GTD, by the way, Andy Lally, he does definitely owe us a pit stop. I think he's probably the only one of those leading contenders that does. Everybody else should be able to get to the end from here. And this, those guys that stopped early in, in the sequence, including uh, in particular uh, the one of the number 92 car for uh, Kelly Boston Riley, Julian Andler, he came in fairly early, as did um, one of the Aston Martins, didn't it? And, and Antonio Garcia. Yeah, Ross Gunn in number 23 came in. He was the earliest one to come into the pits. But I think this could... With, 
with this caution, he might be oh. able to get to the end from here. That strategy could Jeremy pan out in their favour. Got a very slow move moving Aston Martin. It's the number 23, Harder oh. Racing Car. I think that's dead stick. I, I, that car is, is... I don't think Ross Gunn's got the V8 actually with fire in its belly. He's literally coasting down the hill. Here come the rest of the cars behind. They'll be asking their teams to ask race control, can we go by? Because we're under full course yellow. And this is very strange from Ross Gunn if he hasn't got a problem. Very strange indeed, coming down through rainy curve at the moment. And where is he in the line? He is he's the first of the GTD Pros cars. Um, and we do get a split start for a GT. At least they drop away. But uh, the, I think there's a couple of GTDs. I think the GTDs uh, are ahead of him. At least three GTDs. Sorry, I, I said split start there. I mean the prototypes going back through in front of all the GTDs uh, cars. That is very unusual, Jeremy. Can't work that one out, I'm afraid. I've, I thought I'd seen it all on a racetrack, but that one's confusing me. Yeah, it really is. Uh, not quite sure what could have been going on there, because, um, yeah, <laughs> don't know. Got, got me. Uh, Shea Adam down in the pit lane. Nasty incident a few moments ago with Juan Pablo Montoya's car in for service. Ed Jones a little bit uh, too friendly with the Rick Ware racing team. Everything all right down there? Yep, all their mechanics still have all their digits and everyone's okay. They're just a little bit panicked by a very close call. Well, I'm not surprised. Had to chase the Aaron tyre down the pit lane. They won't get a... I'm sure they won't get a penalty for that. Here's another car moving really slowly. Pits are open for all cars. It's the uh, Flexbox sponsored machine, which is the... The number 80 of Seb Pre uh, No, it's not the number 80 of Seb Pre at all, is it? Uh, I I'm not sure what the GT cars are doing at the moment, but they are driving exceptionally slowly. It it it's, a it's a puzzle to me, this, Jeremy, that we've got two very distinct clumps of cars uh, driving the first safety car. is going across the start-finish line now. Uh, and then there's a big gap while everybody is uh, is trying to catch up, I presume, but try and stay at the safety car speed. I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know. I, I did. I, I was saying I wasn't happy with how fast people were coming around turn 11. So if it's to slow the cars down to make sure that the recovery can go on, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm very fine with that. But Ross Gunn certainly was going very slowly indeed, much to the consternation of the cars that were behind him. Very strange. <laughs> but the uh, the Mikkel Jensen did just come into the pits in the, the car that was leading the race overall and LMP2. So he's going to drop to the back of the pack in LMP2. Has done, just left the pit lane. He yeah, is now pit. in seventh, correct? Yeah. This is a very slow pace behind the safety car. Very slow indeed. A uh, uh, number of people asking, are people on fuel safe? We've seen it at Bathurst, real shim click, uh, slim click, click. He says, I remember somebody switching the engine off and coasting downhill at Bathurst and down onto Conrod out of the elbow. He was going slow even though before the top of the hill, RSG. Uh, Wicker Bill saying the same thing. Hello to Patrick watching from Germany beside Porsche. What drivers are teams from Germany race across the categories? Oh, where do you want to start? Huge interest. Uh, Mercedes Benz as a manufacturer, BMW as a manufacturer. And uh, plenty of interest in terms of drivers from that part of Europe as well. At IMSA Radio. And don't forget, hashtag Michelin PRT. When we'll use your questions at the end of the race. Now, I've got some news. I, I, I think I know what was happening with that Aston Martin share. Adam, you might have uh, the definitive answer. Go ahead from the pit lane. The answer was a hand held up from the box. 
saying the lead strategist, I screwed up. They did a pass round when they weren't eligible to. Ross was going to lead to try and put that back right. Race control noticed. Right. Uh, and unfortunately, Antonio Garcia followed that number 23 around and took the pass around when it shouldn't. Now, that, Jeremy, is a big no-no and punitive penalties. Now, that makes absolute sense as Ross was trying to redress that. But unfortunately, I don't think he's been able uh, to do that. So those are going to be long stops. Take your Kindle with you and read a couple of chapters of War and Peace for both of those cars if they have not been able to redress that mistake. Huge mistake. Huge mistake, yeah, absolutely right. So, well done, I'm, shit. I'm wondering whether the, the, is the 91 car a part of that as well? Uh, Porsche 91. Because that, that had... Uh, that had made a pit stop, uh, and yet it's currently running second behind no, Andy Lally, who hasn't stopped yet. So uh, I, I think they might have a bit of a problem as well, potentially. Andy Lally? The 97 car, I don't think... Did that come in? Bill Oberlin in the Turner Motorsport BMW M3 GT3. Yeah, yeah he did. He came in. When did Andy Lally last come in? There's five pit stops against the Magnus racing car, um, which is the most of any car in a decent position. Uh, yeah, safety car lights are out, by the way. Just before uh, the previous caution period on lap 44, I think Andy Lally right. classed in. OK. Well, we'll see those, those penalties will not be called until we go back to green flag, but at least a couple of GT cars we think has fallen foul of taking uh, a pass around when they weren't allowed to do so. So you normally get docked a full lap for doing that. So I expect long uh, stop and long holds. 41 minutes on the nose. And Alex Sims comes back to green. Two Cadillacs leading the 31 from the 01, the red front from the gold front. And they've jumped off ahead of Nick Yellily and the best of the BMWs. What a run BMW have had so far this weekend. Is it a drive back to to the front of the field from Nick Tandy after a bad start for the Porsche Penske Motorsports pair. Side by side, the two Cadillacs, not teammates, these cars. And Renger van der Zander gets the grip and drives around Alexander Sims through turn three and into turn four and heads for the hills or heads for turn five and up the hill at least. What a manoeuvre there. What a manoeuvre. Penalties coming. Drive through for the number 20 high class racing car for hitting that mechanic. That was one that we expected. Pit lane speed violation as well for the number 35 Guido van der Garde, TDS racing car. And more to come, I suspect. What a restart, Jeremy Shaw, from Renga van der Zander. He is definitely in the right mood this afternoon. Yeah, and using all his experience there in this sort of a car, at least a, a prototype car here at uh, World Tech Raceway, Alexander Sims, you know, he's got lots of experience in lots of different cars, but not really much, well, no prior prototype experience here. Uh, and uh, Renge van der Zenden was able to uh, get the grip into that car and, and move on into the lead. He's going to be hard to, uh, to pick back from there, isn't he? Well, again, Jeremy, you've got to be careful about how much energy you put into those tyres early on. The AO Porsche Rexy with a couple of chipped teeth and a cast on the left hand door that's been signed into the pit lane to lose one of the sponsor banners that it picked up up the hill the left hander into pit lane if you come in there sharpish enough uh, you can drop that off the front but that's terrible news for sebastian prio the channel islander was well up and in the hunt there and he's dropped right to the back of gtd very bad look indeed but no choice other than to do that, the car would have overheated if he'd stayed out there. What of the rest of GT? Andy Lally leading for the number 44 Magnus Racing machine. And then in second place, that's the Flexbox car that I was trying to place earlier on. In second position, Kai van Berlo, Kelly Moss Racing. In the wheel tracks of that leader, Failure to adhere to the minimum pit refueling time is a drive-through for 
the number 51, Juan Pablo Montoya, out of third in LMP2 for Rick Ware Racing. Costly again, Porsche keys to the race, minimise your mistakes. Oh, that's bad news. And also coming into the pit lane now, Roskun Antonio Garcia. These are the long penalties for blowing the wave by rules. This is going to be painful, Jeremy. They'll have to stop in the box at the end of pit lane. And it will be multiples of minutes here. The stopwatch on for both of them. Probably could get out and boil an egg for the amount of time that they're going to be sitting there. Uncharacteristic from both of those teams, and particularly for Antonio Garcia, who got on the radio straight away and said, I've followed the Aston through. Was I supposed to? Uh, the answer was uh, no. Uh, no. But a side-by-side -side action a moment or two ago, and the car getting the worst of it was Paul Loop Shatnam for PR1 Matheson. Yeah. Mo no, uh, yes, for PR1 Matheson Motorsport. Yeah. And it was the he had been leading strike. the class. Yeah. yeah. And he's uh, shuffled all, all the way back now to what fourth or fifth place in LMP2. Turn six, by the way, was uh, exit turn five into turn six was where the AO Porsche picked up the WeatherTech banner. There's been a few of those uh, disappeared. Vassar Sullivan, number 14. So, how come we've got WeatherTech, Faf, and Vassar Sullivan all the way at the back of GTD, the three GTD Pro cars, Jeremy? How, what happened there? Was that an extra pit stop for those guys to get to the end? Which cars? Which cars? Uh, which the, cars? the 79 WeatherTech AMG, the FAF Motorsport 9, well, they've had a couple of problems, but Ben Barnicott and the Vassar Sullivan Lexus RCF GT3, they've dropped way, way to the back, all the GT Pro cars, but, of course, Ross Good and Antonio Garcia, we know they're in for, for penalties at the moment. Yeah, uh, not sure, to be honest. <laughs> it's all a bit confusing. The number 14 car... Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave you with that sure for, for a moment. Um, not sure. Let me. I'll have a look and see if I can pull up. His last stop was on lap 56, and which we've... was uh, before the caution period. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Lost ground during that stop somehow. Yeah. I think it's a short answer. Then they didn't uh, eschew the opportunity to uh, take a, a wave by when they should have. Did they? I can't believe that uh, no. they missed that. No. Get a shake down no. there to find out what happened. It's Meanwhile, the, particularly uh, the number uh, 14 car share, please, if you would. A, a bunch of GTP cars turning their fastest laps of the race, including the race leader, Renga van der Zander, 116.8. The fastest lap of the race was by uh, Pipa Durrani uh, quite a long time ago, at 116.4. Uh, but uh, Van der Zander, the only car into the uh, 16s on that last lap. Don't need the GTD pros at the front of the field to give us a good race in the GT category. Andy Lally, Kai Van Paul up, B, Bill Orbelin, Julian Andler and Robbie Forley. Pretty much line astern, Trent Hinman for Wright Motorsports is uh, pretty close uh, as well in the bright yellow vault Porsche. They're climbing the hill now to the corkscrew ship. Adam has been down to Lexus. What happened with them to put uh, their number 14 car? And Ben Barnick at way to the back and in, uh, the, in terms of all the GTD cars. Well, let's ask Jack. Jack, how did all of these GTD cars get around the GTD pros? Um, I don't really understand myself either just right now. I think it's to do with the pass around. Um, but yeah, it's been a really wild race. What's gone on? So uh, yeah, it's been, been been a mad one. So yeah, I'm about as confused as you are probably. <laughs> Is it easier to sit here and watch it going on or be behind the wheel? I mean, from stress level wise. Uh, both pretty stressful. Like it was very wild. It was very wild out there. I'd obviously had a crazy start, went backwards and then went forwards again and uh, had a 
good restart and some, you know, a lot of passing and whatnot. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a really wild race. Not what we expected. Not at all. Well, the up and down day continues, and hopefully you keep the podium streak going. As Jeremy pointed out for you and Ben, it's been all the way back to Sebring last year. Yeah, look, that's, this has never been our strongest track, to be fair, and uh, got the Lexus, the Bass Sullivan guys, have got the Lexus RCF working working well around there, and if we can come away from here with some solid points and then move on to Watkins and more sport, which should usually be better for us. Spoken like the championship leader. So let's take stock then as we move towards the last 30 minutes. Renger van der Zander for Cadillac racing by a second and a half. The 0-1 ahead of Alexander Sims in the 31. Alex, having been passed early on, has not dropped too far away. Nick Yellily still third for BMW Team RLL. He's about another second and a half away in third position. Then Nick Tandy about a second behind Nick Yellily in the first and the best place of the Porsche Penske Motorsport machines. Then Philippe Albuquerque, Konica Minolta, Acura, the number 10 car. Augusta Farfus, 24 BMW. Mike Rockenfeller, JDC, Miller Motorsports, Porsche 963, just eight seconds off the lead. They'll be delighted with that, and he's ahead of Tom Blomqvist by half a second. That'll be a decent battle as well. In P2, Ben Henley for CrowdStrike. Ben Hanley for CrowdStrike, the 0-4 by uh, APR. It leads by now half a second from Era and Ryan DL in the 18. Paul Loop Shatnan in third and the two and a half seconds further back. Lots of fast laps coming in throughout the field. Andy Lally, Magnus Racing, just ahead of the number 91 Paget. Sponsored Kelly Moss with Riley. Kai Van Berlo driven 91 Porsche, that is. So 44 Aston Martin, 91 Porsche, Bill Orbelin. 97 BMW, Julian Andlau, Kelly Moss, second car, the 92 in fourth, Robbie Foley, fifth for Turner Motorsport. All these cars line of stern, by the way, coming through the coming through the corkscrew now, and an audacious manoeuvre there by Frederick Schandorf, who I think has just gone by Phil Ellis in the Winwood Racing for 10th and 11th position. Winwood AMG, those cars all together and all on the lead lap in GTD. Jeremy Shaw, that's an yeah. absolute barn burner. Yeah, it is. And uh, all of them ahead of the GTD Pro leader. Like I can say, like Jack says, I'm not quite sure how that happened, but uh, the, uh, it certainly gave on in GTD Pro because Gunion is just ahead of Patrick Pile uh, and then uh, Ben Barnicut is about six seconds back in third position. So he's still that podium streak. It's still a possibility for that team, particularly, well, it, it's almost a, almost a certainty now with the uh, with the miscue and subsequent stop and hold penalty for both the Harder Racing Aston Martin and the Corvette. So uh, they're looking good for third position at, at worst there, but the odd thing is, I'm not quite sure how they fell behind all those GCD cars. And it's not as if they're a lap off either, so they haven't been split by laps. No. But something, again, weird. Oh, big! Big piece of advertising lying on the road, coming out of turn at six, I think. Now, that's been there for a little while. I thought, actually, it was just some dirt on the track. I didn't realise it was a Corex board. Uh, we might have to have that cleared up, actually. It's part of the debris from where the EO Porsche went off and hit one of the airframe signs. Uh, and that could be very nasty if that gets flicked up. Side by side for the lead into the final corner. Oh my goodness, what a maneuver by Alexander Sims to get right back on terms with Renger van der Zander. We said he'd not dropped Sims, he knows it now. They're carving through the GT traffic. Down. Oh, the lead has gone wide. Here's the opportunity for Sims and the exit of turn one into turn two. No, can't get that one done. Slight mistake for Renger van der Zander there. They're coming past the GTD leader now. They've just fought their way through that nine-car train that is battling at the front of GTD. Man, that's great. And there is... Now, is Nick Tandy ahead of Yellily? Yes, he is. Tandy's ahead of Yellily. So he's up into third place. That's just happened because that's not how they crossed the line. They're going through turn five now, and they're coming through there. So Tandy's used the benefit of the traffic to his advantage. 
So the two Nicks have swapped round and Philippe Albuquerque's right there as well. This is awesome stuff, Jeremy, with still 28 minutes to go. Yeah, really, and uh, you know, now it's a question of uh, who can look after their tyres the best, I think, at the front of the field. Uh, and that ploy by uh, Maya Shank Racing uh, is not paying off because Tom Grunkis cannot find a way past uh, Mike Rockenfeller. So he's back in the eighth position. Uh, and having lost so much time in the middle stint of this race on all the tyres, that's coming back to haunt them. Uh, we're going to have to start thinking about our BDO Accounting Tax and Advisory Services Nose Strategy Award. So who's played this right? Well, at the moment, you would say the two Cadillac teams, the 01 and the 31, Jeremy, have done their sums the best. Can they hang on to it? Also, Magnus Racing have played their cards the best in the GTD category. And how about CrowdStrike? Some good racing, certainly, that has got them to the front of the field. Well, that LMP2 battle's been an absolute dogfight. Yeah. All through that's today. Continu that's continuing now. We've got the top uh, four cars absolutely no to tail in uh, LMP2. That's a tremendous battle as Ringo van der Zender begins to stretch itself just a little bit of a lead over the other Cadillac of Alexander Sims. And Nick Tandy, as you say, up into third position now. Uh, he's got work, some work to do if he's going to catch the two Cadillacs, however. Another, another uh, for that uh, BDO strategy call, John, I'm going to nominate number 77 team uh, also for making their pit stop very, very early on uh, to hand over that, that car to Trent Hinman up into sixth position uh, as a result of that. Uh, and that's worked out very, very well for them. How did Turner BMW get their way to third, by the way? I mean, I, I know we shouldn't really ask that because it's just what they do. Third and fifth, John Salama doing his uh, magic, working heaps magic for those two cars. There's a lot of people we're going to have to keep our eyes on. Oh, problem for Era on the front straight. That is a strike on the left-hand side for the number 18 car on the front straight. And that's damage now. How far can we get that car around? That is an absolute disaster for Ryan DL. Coming out of the final corner in that traffic, got on the wrong side. Oh, got, got put, turned around. It's the CrowdStrike car again involved there. That's a couple of times they've been involved in incidents at turn number 11. And Ben Hanley with the chrome horn onto the back of Ryan DL as they came out of turn 11 side by side. That oh. might attract a, that uh, might attract a penalty as well, given the severe consequences that it's caused to ERA and Ryan DL's race, Jeremy. Uh, absolutely, and uh, Shata there, number 52 car, he vaulted from third to first on that lap, so not only, uh, he, he also got past uh, Ben Hanley too, not quite sure how that was. Was that that same little incident? Same incident, there? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Shatnam was right there. They were battling together. Michael Jensen uh, not too far behind uh, with the first of the TDS cars. Then the gap is to Guido van der Garde. Now, where did Ryan DL get to? Turn 11 again and another wide moment for the 52 car. Paul Loop Shatnam this time. And that means Michael Jensen's gone to the lead in LMP2. We said it was a dogfight. Jensen from Ben Handley. Paul Luke Shatton down to third. It's all happening on the run out of turn number 11, Jeremy, and the run to the line. All this traffic with the GTD cars. Remember, they've got the ABS braking. So as the tyres are going away, they're perhaps a little more efficient as they're pulling those cars up. And these P2s fighting their way through the GTD tra traffic are just absolutely brilliantly entertaining. Side by side into turn five. The Wins 52 machine and the CrowdStrike 04 coming up on the number 57 Phil Ellis Winwood racing car. They're still side by side through six. This is going to end in tears. Surely coming up to the back of the 91 Porsche. Kai van Berlo, that's the next car ahead of them as they come to the corkscrew down the inside for the CrowdStrike car. Picked the right side, Ben Hanley, and goes back to... The second position, Mikkel Jensen for TDS has now got up the road as he's negotiated those cars. This is full send, full concentration, full speed motorsport, LMP2 racing at its best. I'm so pleased we're keeping this class.
And uh, Kai Van Berlo go here, a run on Andy Lally as they come up towards the start finish line to take the lead of GTD. They're side by Touch. side, banging wheels. Oh my goodness me, this is not the last lap, guys. We've still got 23 minutes to go. Van Berlo down the inside and getting in behind them is Bill Oberlin in the blue Turner Motorsport, blue and black Macintosh car. So this is going to turn into another fight for GTD honors. And right in there as well, uh, we've got uh, Julian Andlauer in the red and white Kelly Moss and Riley car. I don't know where to look at the moment because there are battles literally in every class and pretty much in every part of the circuit. And it's not just a couple of cars, it's three, four and five cars, all scrapping for major positions with 22 and a half minutes still to go. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is absolutely wild out there at the moment. Uh, and in all of the classes, pretty much. I mean, Frank van der Zander, he's got a lead of about 1.4 seconds, um, and uh, he's settling down into a pace uh, mid 17 117.6 last time around for our race leader. He turned his fastest laps in 16.4, 16.7, excuse me, uh, seven laps ago. And uh, but this battle in GTD is absolutely immense. So, whew. I was going to say take a breath, but I'm not sure we're actually going to be able to do that. Here comes the recovering Juan Pablo Montoya through that GT battle. Uh, that's a hold your breath moment, not take a breath moment. As uh, Ryan DL, by the way, has got the number 18 Aero Motorsports LMP2 back to the pit lane. They've replaced a tyre and he is back out, tyre and wheel, and he is back out on the circuit. Cruel look there. And can't tell you as Nick Tandy sets his personal best of the race. I just want to check to see if that contact at turn 11 is being looked at. Can't see that it is. We sometimes don't get all of the uh, messages from race control would uh, look to have been an assisted move by DL. The Scotsman will not be happy about that. And in frankly, it took another car out of what is a great scrap. As far as we're concerned, it took a car out of a great scrap at the head of LMP2. Uh, at the front of the field, we haven't talked about Ringer van der Zander for a little while. 17-3 last time around. So what's that, half a second away from his best lap of the race? 17-7 in second place for Sims. In the second of the Cadillacs, this one, the wheel and engineering machine. He did a 17-7 and 17-3 for Nick Tandy, as reported, who's trying to close in on the two Cadillacs ahead of him. Plain sailing at the moment for Renga van der Zander as he comes around the final corner. He's got the AO Racing number 80, Seb Prio, Porsche 911 GT3R. That's one of the new 992 cars that came into that category at the early part of this year. Gilles Gounon, by the way, making inroads into the GTD field. He leads GTD Pro for WeatherTech Racing, the white, red and, red and blue AMG number 79. And that's going to be interesting as he comes through the field. Yeah. He's got Phil Ellis as his next target, less than a second in front of him. As they yeah, also in the Mercedes, of course. Yes, and that's the problem. The, the problem is for any of those GTD Pro cars who, who want to improve their overall position, it won't matter how many points they get. If, if Shields wins, whether he's in 26th, 25th or 24th overall, he'll get the same amount of points for him, the team and the manufacturer. The problem is they're coming up against pro drivers now because everybody's got their gun drivers in to the end of the race, Jeremy, in, in the GTD cars. That's, ex that's exactly right. Uh, and uh, he, you know, he, he doesn't need to pass any, any of the GTD non-pro cars. He just needs to uh, stay ahead of the other GTD pros. And the good news for Jules Gugnon in that WeatherTech Mercedes is that he does have one of the, the, the inception race of McLaren in between himself and uh, Patrick Pillay. Uh, who was running second in the class. And Ben Barnicott's next up, and he's closed in a little bit. 3.3 seconds behind in third position. You talked about uh, Nick Tandy turning his best lap of the race a couple of laps ago. As a result of that, he's closed right now onto the tail yes. of uh, Alexander Sims. So we've we got a battle for second place. Uh, and 
Finally now, Philip Albuquerque has managed to get away past Augusto Farfus because they've fallen a long, long way behind the third place card, Nick Tandy. But Albuquerque now in at number 10, Conor Camino to Acura into fourth ahead of Augusto Farfus. Lap times so traffic dependent for all of the classes at the moment. By the way, just want to square the circle on something. We saw the inception McLaren leaving the pit lane with a fuel hose attached, which got spread out all the way around the circuit. It's the biggest part, I think, about as far away from the pits as it could be at the top of the corkscrew. That was spotted and penalised uh, by race control, and that penalty has been served. Just to square that circle, I've been Ooh. looking for that. And between By the way, Shea and myself, we've worked that one out, and thanks to the pit lane team for letting us know down there. Jeremy. Yeah, by the way, the uh, the number 25 car not only was overtaken by number 10 car of Philip Albuquerque, he was also overtaken by his teammate, Augusto Farfus. So Nick Yellowley all of a sudden finds himself down in sixth position and only just ahead of Mike Rockenfeller and Tom Blomquist, who are still battling for the uh, seventh position in the class. Here's Tandy down the inside of Alexander Sims at the... Andretti hairpin, he's got yeah. position now and gets the oval up right in front of the 70 inception. McLaren now down the inside of the windward AMG. So that's Nick Yellowley, who was third, what, half a dozen laps ago, now down into sixth position. So I wonder, is he running out of grip? Or is there something more sinister going on with that car? Tandy taking. A brilliant overtaking manoeuvre down the inside. Hello to Brittany, back in Bedfordshire. Nick's wife, who's watching and listening. And Eva and Felix. Now, are they allowed to be up at half past ten on a Sunday evening? I suspect not, even though Dad is doing very, very well indeed. They were on site to see the victory at Long Beach. Yeah. Um, what a victory that was. And that was lovely to see the whole Tandy clan there, Jeremy celebrating uh, with Nick that historic first victory for the Porsche 963 in IMSA competition. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it, to yeah. see that family photo there. Look at this battle going on here in uh, for second position in GTD. I think uh, Kai Van Berlo has made himself scarce at the front there. He's pulling away now from Andy Lally uh, by a substantial margin, but Andy just about managing to stay ahead just no, he's just no. been overtaken by Bill, Bill Oberlin. has gone through We're going into the hairpin. Yeah, yeah, oberlin has gone through, and uh, it is Julian Andlauer who's there in the red and white Porsche behind that Robbie Foley in another turn of motorsport machine, the Lickley Molly car. Then Trent Hinman. I thought Trent would get on the back of this. He's bided his time in that number 77 Volt car, and he is now up with this. This is. This is a really tight battle for, what, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And Brian Sellers is not that far back. I'm hearing from the pit lane that that vault car may be a bit tight on fuel, as Phil Ellis has just gone wide coming out of turn number six. And that cost him a bit of momentum in the windward racing. Mercedes going up the hill, did Marco Sorensen in the heart of racing car take advantage of that have to check as they come across the line yes he's side by side with them now as they come out of Rainey Orbelin then newly into third position Andy Lally struggling for grip front and rear on that uh, Magnus racing machine Kai van Berlo has cleared off to seven seconds down the road Shea Adam down in the pit lane's been talking to a few people and we're starting to see some pit stops as well with 14 minutes to go. Shea, what's going on down in the pits? What are they telling you from the pit wall? Uh, it's the body language that's given stuff away, John. The body language at Volt is we are not going to look at you, we're not going to acknowledge you, we're not coming into the pits again, no. But two cars, the pitter on the exact same lap, Windward Racing in their Mercedes and the uh, USRT Lamborghini, of those crews are up on the wall no tires but fuel nozzles in hand right okay we'll have to keep an eye on that Renga van der Sanders lead is 4.3 seconds Nick Tandy having got by the uh, got by Alexander Sims Cadillac has not pulled away
into the last 13 and a half minutes. Wow, Jeremy still can't call this one. Four seconds at the front of the field, is that enough for Renga van der Zander? Normally, with 13 minutes to go, I'd say yes. But if the tyre situation plays in, our Porsche keys to the race, Never mind the fuel, some of those guys were pretty tight, although we've had some yellows, so I'm, I'm sure they're going to be all right. But my goodness, when we've seen tyre performance of two or three seconds a lap, four seconds might not be enough. Into the pit lane for Phil Ellis now, uh, for Windward Racing. My goodness. Yeah. Do you want so to call the, any yeah. of these uh, classes, Jeremy? Do you know, just saying. No. <laughs> No, well, no, I think uh, Kai Van Berner is looking pretty good for Kelly Moss in GTD at the moment, particularly with that, with that handy lead, although he was one of the first cars to come into the, uh, the, the pit lane. But uh, Nick Yellowly uh, is uh, struggling massively in that number 25 BMW. And Phil Ellis has gone behind the wall with the 57 machine. Significant right front damage, says Shea, from the pit lane. That car is out of the race. That's another retirement. My goodness, what a tough race this has been. Jared Andretti for Andretti Autosport pitched into the end of the pit lane by the number seven Porsche. John Ferrano, Tower Motorsports. Big incident at turn five. John's had to go to hospital. We'll give you an update if we get it. Uh, our thoughts with him and the team, of course. Team Cortef with the Mercedes AMG. Been in the pits for a very long time with their issues. And Aaron Tielitz with that number 12 Lexus RCF GT3. That car off to the right hand side of the final corner. Came back in a flatbed. Gradient Racing running a test session. 26 laps uh, off the overall leader, so what's that? About 22 laps away from the lead in GTD. Catherine Leg now in that car. The number seven, Philippe Naza, driven now. Porsche Penske Motorsports 963 hit the wall, coming out at nine, and that pushed that car back. Antonio Garcia and Ross Gunn for Corvette and Harder Racing. Blew the wave by, ineligible, and took it. So they've had long penalties, and that's taken them a couple of laps out of the battle for GTD as well. That's the tail of war at the bottom of the timing screen. At the top, it's fight, fight, fight till the end. Ten and a half minutes to go. Cadillac by five seconds over Porsche now, with Cadillac in third place. It's a Porsche sandwich between the two Cadillac pieces of bread. Tasty filling, Nick Tandy holding on to that second at the moment. Mikkel Jensen leads LMP2 for TDS Racing ahead of CrowdStrike and Ben Hanley and PR1 Matheson. The wins car for Paul Loop Shatton. In fact, he's just gone up into second place as they've crossed the line. That battle continues. So Paul Loop Shatton for PR1 Matheson in the 52 car just made up a position. Andy Lally still fighting the. <laughs> Magnus race car, here comes that battle for second coming through there. And yes, the wins car confirmed visually now as we've got side by side with the 92 Porsche in the hands of Julian Andler going past Andy Lally. That's third position that's now disappeared for Magnus Racing. That's yeah. not gone well in this last uh, 20 minutes or so for the Flexbox 44 Aston. No, but I think they're really. St I think Andy Lally is just trying to save fuel and trying to stretch it to the end, and uh, I, I, I think that's what's going on here because they stopped a long, long time before everybody else. I think you know they, they they were granted a lifeline. There, it's been a struggle all weekend for that Magnus Racing team with this Aston Martin. They haven't really got that proper handle on it, but you know they they took advantage of the strategy and were running up front there. And I think he's just trying to stretch it to the end there. So he's on massive fuel save mode, I would suggest, uh, and now he's uh, going to perhaps begin to fall back down through the field. But it's been a, you know, no harm, no foul, worth a, worth a punt there for that number 34, 44 team. But meanwhile, Renga van der Zender is really stretching out at the front all of a sudden. Yeah, it went up to just over five seconds, just under five seconds now. But Renga getting the best of the traffic. They're now in clear air for a little while. Let's see how that works. The... Ben Barnicott's car 
No, it's just a glitch. Forget that. Move on. Um, thought about, thoughts about, please, the Global Accounting Tax and Advisory Services BDO Nose Strategy Awards coming in down towards the last five minutes. I'm going to ask you for your nominations in a couple of minutes, Shay and Jeremy, so we can make that award. Uh, just a note, by the way, one of the best uh, battles on the circuit, although it's only for sixth and seventh in GTP, Tom Blomqvist, in a very fast Acura, is still half a second behind Mike Rockefeller for JDC Motorsport, Motorsports in their debut with the Porsche 916 that the team had not fired up or the drivers even driven before this weekend. That, I think, will make John Church very happy indeed, even if Tom Blomqvist actually does get by them. That's been a good half an hour or 40 minutes that that battle has been going on, Jeremy Shaw, and Rockenfella is holding off that number 60 Acura. Brilliant stuff for a first outing. Really impressive. Yeah, as you say, never driven the uh, Porsche 963 before had uh, Mike Rockefeller nor his teammate, uh, Diamond van der Helm. So given that, a remarkable effort by that team. Side by side across the line, and again, it's Andy Lally fighting a rear guard action, but dropping further back in that GTD standings this time. Uh, no, excuse me, that is the 27 car of Michael Sorensen, uh, which is battling with Jules Goulon, Goulon, who's coming through the field in the lead GT. P Pro, GTD Pro car. And the reason he's got a bit of a wiggle on at the minute is that Patrick Pelier for Faf in the number nine plaid Porsche is right with him. And that's the battle for GTD Pro victory right there, Jeremy, albeit 25th and 26th overall yeah. and 10th and 11th GTD cars, but first in GTD Pro, that's for top points. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's an amazing comeback by the by the Faf Motorsports team. Again. They that penalty early in this race. Uh, remarkable to uh, incredible that they should have uh, managed to regain so much ground. Quick I'm driving. Sure, I'm really not quite sure what happened to GTD Pro. It's bizarre. I wonder if we've had another one of those weird things where the, uh, the, the, the classes got separated and therefore had to be split so as not to give somebody a major advantage. It has happened before. Um, they're treated as a single class in terms of the grid after qualifying, although qualifying points are awarded GTD and GTD Pro. They have their own podium, of course. The problem is, depending on where the leader is, uh, you could give one or other of the classes a huge, huge advantage if you don't split them up. I wonder if that's what's happened there. Uh, leader right in traffic again. Lamborghini, Huracan, Forte Racing, right in the mix there. They've had a decent weekend. Loris Spinelli putting in some quick times earlier in the weekend, holding on to a top 10 position in GTD at the moment. So is this the opportunity for Nick Tandy? He's got the gap down to 3.6. It was over five seconds, three, four laps ago, but now he's got to hit the traffic as well. Tandy has got to carve his way past the Faf Porsche, which he does do. Now past the Loris Spinelli driven Lamborghini in 10th in GTD. Now he's coming up to the faster cars in the GTD battle. Gets around the outside of the heart of racing, 27 Aston Martin. Now it's Robbie Foley in the BMW down the inside of turn 10. Tandy is on a tear and the leader, of course, is having to be a little bit careful as he hits that traffic first. Renger van der Zander has almost worked his way to the front of that queue. Three wide across the start finish line as through goes Alexander Sims in third position. Tandy down to two and a half seconds for the lead, Jeremy. Tandy is taking no prisoners through this GTD traffic, but the bad news for him is Renger van der Zander has cleared the number 44. That's the Magnus Racing car that is causing that bottleneck. Tandy's still got three cars to go. That's right. Uh, so that's going to be... He's going to drop all the, all the uh, time he'd gained. He's going to lose right now. Uh, and with only uh, three minutes and 40 seconds remaining, there's... Uh, there's yeah, it's, it's plain sailing now for Renger van der Zender. No mistakes. He should be just fine. That was, a mis uh, I think, a, a position lost there by Brian Sellers to Marco Sorensen. 
Brunsell slipped back a couple of positions in the last few laps. In fact, several positions last lap. The guy who's really charging is Frederick Schandorf in the Inception Racing McLaren. He's up to sixth place now in GTD. So the leader with a bit of clear track for a moment, but then behind Julian and Lau for Kelly Moss with Riley. He'll go down the inside at turn number 11. Nick Tandy's had the benefit of the run over the top and down through the corkscrew. Now comes onto the front straight. Now, if he can close in and pass Julian before the end of the front straight, that might be advantage. Tandy across the line, the gap is back out, but not as far as it was, 3.6 seconds. What's in front of the 0-1 now? He's got the number 97 next up. That is the Bill Orbelin driven Turner Motorsport car. Then there's a bit of a gap to the leader in GTD, Kai Van Berlo in the 91 Porsche. So this is all going to be being watched by the guys on the pit wall. Even Tandy, even Tandy, surely can't make this one work. Keeping an eye on the battles in GTD yeah. as Trent Hinman is having a scrap. The 77 car has worked its way, I think, ahead of Robbie Forley there. If my eyes didn't deceive me, if that's the case, that's a couple of places gained by Trent Hindman. Confirm yeah. that as they come round. It will not be... Uh, it will not be the white flag this time around. Two laps to go. That might be the Philip that's Tandy needed to the line then a minute and 39 38 seconds to go a lap here is about a minute and 20 in traffic so no white flag this time around we will have 4.4 miles for Renga van der Zander and Cadillac Racing 3.3 seconds Tandy did take three tenths it's not going to be enough unless there's something major goes on in front of the 0-1 car is Kai van Berlo. And then a huge gap to the high-class racing car. They're already going up the hill on the rear hull straight. So this is a real fight behind them in GTP. The two BMWs having a scrap. Uh, I'm sorry, the BMW and the number 60 Acura. So that's Farfus and Blomfist for uh, fifth and sixth position. Jeremy, this race is just... just keeps on giving can we just keep going please yeah it, it is incredible isn't it i mean it's absolutely superb race oh finally the number 60 car blomquist has got past mike rockenfeller that took him a long long time yeah as i said though john churchill yeah. and by the way mike rockenfeller welcome back to imza racing he's lost absolutely nothing has he jumped in that car for the first time this weekend and it looks like he's never been away rocky welcome back white flag for the final lap of the Mortal Corsa de Monterey, powered by Hyundai. The final two and a bit miles of what has been an extraordinarily entertaining race and indeed weekend here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. 3.6 seconds it's gone back out to for Nick Tandy as he caught traffic in an inopportune moment. Now, what's ahead of Renga van der Zander? Well, what's ahead of him is clear track at the moment until uh, he... Well, I, I don't think he's going to catch the high-class car. They're coming down through rainy curve turn nine. So it's a run to the line now for Renga. Jeremy Shaw, your BDO Nose Strategy Award. I mean, I think you, if it's all about strategy, you've got to have it handed to the race winners, don't you? I mean, they've played it absolutely perfectly. There's a bunch of different tyre strategies that could have been employed, but uh, they called everything absolutely uh, in their favour. And uh, just one corner to go now for Renga van der Zander. Shea, Adam, do you concur? I completely agree. The 0-1 okay. as it crosses the line and the team cheers in the background. They did it. BDO No Strategy Award goes to the winner of the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship here. Played perfectly for the 0-1 Cadillac. Nick Tandy fighting back for Porsche after an untidy race for Porsche Penske Motorsport. But a win and a second place in consecutive races for the number six. And Alexander Sims brings the Wheel and Engineering Cadillac 
number 31 onto the third step of the podium. Sheer Adam is with the winning team. With Sebastian Bourdais, this at the beginning of the weekend did not seem likely, did not seem possible, and did not seem like it was going to come this week. It seemed like it was going to be another long race weekend for a team that's had a couple too many of those in a row. But Seb, Seb, the win came, and it could not have come at a better time, leading into the 24 hours of Le Mans race winner of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. How good does it feel? Uh, well, with the, what, say, two months that we've had lately, uh, yeah, it feels really good. I mean, I, I'm really, really happy for the boys because it's, uh, it's been a, you can see emotions run high, and it's not just because of a race win. It's like we had to dig ourselves as a big hole, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really good for the whole group, for Cadillac, and, uh, you know, Ranger did pretty awesome, as always, and, uh, yeah, couldn't be any happier for everybody involved here. This also keeps Cadillac firmly in the lead of the Manufacturers' Championship, and with a long break ahead, I bet they'll be pretty happy with you, too. Long break? What are you talking about? We're yeah. going straight to Le Mans. Well, yeah, for this championship. Hey, good luck in France. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Uh, what a turnaround. That car was in the wall at turn six early in the weekend. Uh, a return of that break by Wyatt. Issue for... Uh, Sebastian, but my goodness me, uh, what a comeback. Nick Tandy, second. Uh, let's go through the classes. Mikkel Jensen, TDS Racing at home. The number 11 car it wins LMP2 from the PR1 Matheson 52, the wins car. Ben Keating and Paul Lubchat. I'm fighting the winner of that. That was a really rough battle. There's going to be some dented, dinged LMP2 cars. They were racing those like stock cars, not like prototypes. And third for CrowdStrike Racing by APR. Uh, they led that class as well. I think pretty much everybody led the class at some stage. Uh, let's go down to the pit lane. Uh, Sheer Adam, who have you got now? Well, when WeatherTech is on your chest, there is one race that you want to win more than any other, and that's the one at WeatherTech Raceway. They're going to take it. Danny Junkadea, you've got that done. Can you breathe now? Well, I, to be honest, I don't think anything beats Daytona, because it's for sure the highlight. But after Daytona, I would guess this one would be the next one. Kind of a home race for us, and especially after a difficult Long Beach weekend. Uh, difficult race, mid-race. We had a, I had a really good start. And I was up to second already, but then... Yeah, the race didn't go our, our way with the strategy and so on. I was actually I was really pissed off. I just left. I I went to have a drink, have a have a have something to eat, and then suddenly we were in the lead again, and I didn't know why. So I just came back and we brought it home with a win. So great! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Needs to dip off for a refreshing beverage more more often. Uh, so GTD Pro WeatherTech Racing, the 79 car winning it from Ben Barnicott and Vassar Sullivan in the Lexus RCF GT3. Patrick Peeler for FAF Motorsport uh, in third. What a comeback for FAF Motorsport. Uh, and just two tenths of a second at the line between Faf in third and Vassar Sullivan in second after 97 laps in the GTD Pro Class. GTD, Kai van Berlo, first win for Kelly Moss Racing. Well done to Victoria and Andy and the rest of the team. The number 91 car winning by 10 seconds from Bill Orbelin. Uh, at the other end of the scale of, uh, of experience, Turner Motorsport and uh, Bill Orbelin in terms of the IMSA Championship, at least, for the 97 team. And guess what? Kelly Moss get a second car uh, on the podium. Julian Andlaus, 92, coming home in third. What a day for Kelly Moss Racing, expanding into the GTD category uh, only earlier this year, Jeremy Shaw. That is a result to be proud of for Victoria, Andy, and the rest of the team. Uh, it really is. Tremendous job. I mean, they had a great run at Long Beach as well. Uh, the cars were competitive all weekend long here. Alec Yudel qualified on the front row of the grid. Uh, so uh, in the in the sister car, so a first and a third. Yeah, that's a remarkable effort. Yeah. Uh, and hats off. Also to Andy Lally, what a stint he drove he in that Magnus race, the Aston Martin, to come home in fourth position, just off the podium. But man, I mean, that car's been nowhere all weekend. They uh, they 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 pulled something out of yep. the hat strategy-wise and, and came over the fourth place finish. That's got to feel like two wins yeah. for Andy Lally. It's been a long, Let long time since Andy's won a race, but uh, that was a great drive by him yep. uh, and that Magnus Racing team. Let's go down to Cher, who's got the winners in GTD. Kai van Berlo out of that Porsche. 
Well, Kai, it's not been a nice track to you in the past, this place, but hey, one start in GTD and one win. How does it feel? I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, I've had probably the roughest three months in my race career ever. Setback after setback after setback. And then, you know, we came here with, I was, I, I said before the weekend, I'm going to be happy with a podium at this stage. And then we saw we were quick. Oh. Alan did an amazing job all weekend. Oh, uh, even though we started further back. I had a lot of confidence in a race car, especially over the long runs. And as the race progressed, you know, a lot of strategies played out. I had no clue where we are, but I had a good feeling in the car. And eventually, you know, with one hour to go, everything settled. And we were like, oh, we're in P2. And the 44 is in front of us, and slightly older tires, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, fuck, we can, we can actually go over in here. And uh, eventually, you know, the Aston had massive speed on the straight, so it was hard to make a pass in the beginning. So I was just waiting, waiting, waiting while defending for the car behind me. And I had one opportunity, went for it, covered the inside, got past, and then just, uh, yeah, tried to pull the gap and then drive consistent pace until the end. But, uh, man, I'm, I'm insanely proud of the team. As I said, it hasn't been the easiest couple of weeks. And now coming away with a win, uh, I mean, massive credit to Kelly Moss Riley. And absolutely, uh, Alan did an amazing job this weekend. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. And apologies for the language, folks. <laughs> so... First and third for them, Turner Motorsport in the middle. GTD Pro, WeatherTech from Vassa, from Faf Motorsport. A couple of people being back through. Um, William Brunner uh, saying, pretty sure GTD Pro was mostly down to penalties and incidents. Um, the wave buys are definitely for all of GTD and not split so that the Petite incident last year doesn't happen again. Let's have more, uh, uh, more. Uh, reaction from down near Victory Circle. Shea Adam is patrolling that area. Shea, who have you got? Stephen Thomas and Mikkel Jensen, winners in the LMP2 class. Mikkel, you know what it's like to win here. You did it in 2021. But Stephen, this is a new sensation. How great is it? It's a wonderful feeling. I mean, it's really my home race. So he had a good car. You know, I tried to hold it on the track. We put this guy, he drove through the entire field. <laughs> I mean, he drove through the entire field to win the race. It's one of the best things I've ever seen on a racetrack. Michael, how badly did you want this one? Oh, very bad, especially after what happened. Uh, you know, we did a wrong call on, on getting Steven to pit, so he had to do a ride through. We lost track position. Uh, there was some miscommunication when the last yellow was there, so I didn't pit when I should have pitted. Uh, so I had to start from, from the back, and yeah, Steven said drove through the entire field, so it just feels amazing. I mean, it feels sweeter when you had to work hard for it. You're one of the drivers who's privileged to race in the top class of cars on a global stage, but you get to race in LMP2 against some of the best of the best. Is it great to win one of these races and know that you've beat seven other drivers who are top ranked too? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in hypercar normally, but I think the, the pro drivers here are as good. You know, all deserve a drive in, in hypercar as well. So, um, I mean, they're all rapid drivers very fast, so it's, it's also a, a very good feeling to win against them for sure. Congrats to you both on the biggest trophy. Roll on the Glen. Thank you. We're looking forward to it. Oh, brilliant stuff. Uh, Andy Lally did an hour and a half nearly. One hour, over one hour and 25 minutes uh, in that car. 125 and 11 uh, to grab that fourth place. Uh, that is, that's pretty tight for stint time for his uh, teammate. Uh, uh, oh, Nick Tandy is hoving interview with Cher from Porsche Penske uh, Motorsport. Let's get down to him before we wrap up and go to Michelin Post Race Tech. Hashtag Michelin PRT for that. Shit. Hello, Nick. How are you? Um, hot, sweaty, but satisfied, I guess. I mean, P2 in that race, given how tight that competition was, that's got to feel like a really good day at the end of all of it. Yeah, I mean, it is. You know, it's a great points day. Um, obviously, the race didn't start well for either of our cars. But, um, yeah, you know, we recovered... The car had pace. Uh, we just need a bit of track position. But the zero one, you know, they did a, they did a great job. Um, it was a fun race. I hope it was fun to watch. It was good to drive with all the restarts and the different, different cars having different pace at different points in the, the stints in the race. You know, so it was just, uh, it was fun. But I'd rather have a boring race where we win. <laughs> well, I mean, that was a fun race. But at the end of it, you guys are still championship lead by quite a bit, given that a car who won the race was well out of the points. So that's got to feel a bit like a win. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, we've got to maximise every weekend for what we can. Um, and, yeah, you know, we're never going to win every race. It's, it's just not going to happen. You've got to maximise what you can each weekend. And, um, you know, I think we did again. That's three podiums out of four four rounds. So I think, yeah, as a, as a 
team we're we're really gelling and executing well so it's it's good you know going into you know the summer season and and also Le Mans of course so yeah good stuff happy well congrats and Brittany's watching and she let us know so you can say hi to her she's still awake then <laughs> yeah you need to go to bed hun but I'll see you soon tomorrow hopefully. thanks Nick Nick Tandy uh, from second position will keep Shea Adam down there to pick up some more of the stories. Jeremy Shaw and me, John Heinoff, back in just a few moments' time. We're going to hand the PA here at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Sega over for the formalities. Michelin Post Race Tech next. We've got more IMSA racing coming at Detroit on the weekend of Le Mans Test Day. That's the first weekend in June. Back with more endurance racing next weekend on RS1 and in sound and vision with the World TV feed uh, from Thursday for the Nürburgring 24. Stay tuned, RS2 next with Michelin Post Race Tech from WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca.